order will be ready when you get there. Plus, get exclusive deals and earn reward points all from your smartphone with the DQ app. Good luck to the Trojans from the Dairy Queen in Madison. Trust your farming operation with the locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. With their state-of-the-art facility, Farmer's Ag Center offers trusted advice when it comes to fertilizer, seed, and crop protection products. Area producers can expect accurate and timely advice, including efficient delivery and application of products during all seasons. Locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. The leaders in the field, the leaders in customer service, proud to serve area farmers and proud to support area communities. Don't miss your favorite new Madison tradition. It's the second annual Parade of Lights hosted by KJAM Radio. The Parade of Lights will travel down Egan Avenue on Saturday, December the 2nd, starting at 5.30 p.m. If your business group or organization would like to have an entry in the Parade of Lights, you can download a registration form at AmazingMadison.com. The second annual Parade of Lights, brought to you by Heartland Energy, First Bank and Trust, East River Electric, The Dairy Queen, Montgomery's, and Sioux Valley Energy. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth, rounding out the FNM pregame show, guys. The Mayville Comets won the toss. They deferred, and the Trojans will start off with the football we're going to close out the FNM pregame show with our keys to the game. We've got three keys to the game. First one, make them make mistakes. This team you're facing is not a great one. You saw them back earlier in the season, so you know what to expect. Take advantage of guys not having their best year. Bring pressure, force bad passes, hold them on three and outs. Be in position defensively, get sacks, and be disruptive. They're on your turf now, and this team has never swept you in a season, let alone beat you prior to this year. Send them home with an L and tie your season series at one apiece. And we're getting kicked off here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. There we go. Back to return. Looks like it's going to be Austin Lake far side. Returning near side. Past the 25 now. Across the 30. Got blocking from Iverson. Across the 40. He's at the 50 now. Skipped over Iverson. Got into Comet territory on the return. That's got to be the best return all season for the Trojans. And we got a uh, swamp at returner. Skogerbo's not back there. It's going to be Preston Iverson joining Austin Lake on kick returns. And there we go. That's how the Trojans get this one started off all the way in opposing territory. That is the first time they started a game in opposing territory all season long. They're all the way to their 41 with it. Good way to start off this one. Trey Heddick coming in at quarterback again. This is the game where he got his first action of the season. Hopped in the second half for Joey Cole and took over. Ball on the near side of hash. One receiver split on each side of the field. Ortman on his right hip. He takes a snap. Going to fake the handoff to Ortman. Going to try to find more. Looks like he was contacted early before the ball got there, but falls incomplete regardless. Brings up second down. Key to the game number two, don't go away from what works. Back against Valley City State in week nine, we threw the ball early and got first downs through the air, but went away from it going into the next drive. Whatever works, keep doing it till they stop it, regardless of how lopsided it may make the run and pass in terms of leaning one way or the other. Trust what you see with your eyes and don't be afraid to stick with it. Coming out on second down now. Clock stopped at 14.23. Two receivers got twins split on each side, of, or actually... Empty set. Trips far side. Two receivers near. Head it. Quick pass. Far side. Catch made. Austin Lake trying to avoid a defender. Can't do it. Gets tackled at the ankles. Not going to see. Going to lose a yard on that one. Now it's going to be third and 11 for Dakota State on the early two downs. Key to the game number three. Seal the deal. The Trojans are due. Simple as that. It's almost been a year now since this team saw a victory with at least or with the last one coming November 12, 2022 at home against Waldorf for the last game against uh, on Trojan Field. Time to get things back on track and take down a very beatable team. You know your past mistakes and what you can't do this time around as players and coaches. Now time to take what you learned and bring it to the field and dominate. Hedick takes a snap, looking. Going to have to step up. Got some pressure in the pocket. Going to let it fly still. Finds a man. It goes in and out of the hands of one of the guys he was trying to hit. Let's see who was trying to get the toss to. Looks like Maddox Keeney. He got squashed on that one. Falling incomplete. A little bit of a wobbler there on the pass from Hedick. Tough one to corral for Maddox Keeney. Got a three down on the first drive for the Trojans. No positive yardage on this early going, on this early down, and they can't take advantage of the exceptional field position they have in the early going. 
Clock stopped at 13.03. Still a nil-nil start. And those were your keys to the game. We'll get the punt away. Silius in back to punt it. He's going to punt that one away. Got some good air under it. Going to be caught at the 16, I believe. Somewhere near it. 15 or 16. And that's where the common offense will come on out and get going. Common offense put up 13 points against the Trojans back in uh, week five. They also weren't able to get over 200 total yards of offense as well in that game, but still came away with the win. Trojans couldn't muster their own offense in that game, and that's why they came away with it because the Trojan defense stepped up in the second half and slowed things down and only allowed three points. First and ten for the Comets. Ball on the far side hash. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon in the pistol. Behind him is the man, Ullman. Taking the snap. Hand off, Ullman. Going up the middle with it. Got some room. Spins around a defender. Runs into three Trojans. Going to get about four yards before he is taken down, though. And it looks like they got a little bit more of a... A more generous spot to start this drive off at. They're at the 18. All right, gain of four, second and six on the way for these Comets. Same set for them. One receiver split on each side. Salmon, pistol, Ullman behind him. Says, come get on my right hip. And he does. Says, go out wide. Runs out. Taking the snap. Salmon, looking. Trying to find middle of the field. Lobs it up. Finds a man near side. Catch made across the 35. And that's going to be a Comet first down. Comet's the first one to get a first down in this game, but it only took a couple of plays. Trojans started 0-1 on third down in this game against Mayville State back in week five. They were 3 for 16. MSU wasn't much better. They were 4 for 17. So we'll see how the third down battle goes in this game. Two receiver, twin split on each side of the field. Balls on the near side, hash down. Salmon in the pistol. Behind him is Ullman. Takes a snap. Hands it off to him. No room in the middle. Nowhere to go. Dwyer and Murphy take him down. Good joint effort from Dwyer and Murphy. Big fellows on the interior. Murphy with 42 tackles on the season. Make that 43 now. Not for a loss. They maintain the spot. It's now second down at 10. Dwyer got 28 tackles now on the year. 11 minutes left in the opening quarter here. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon back in the pistol. Behind him, Ullman. Ullman now on his left hip. Taking the snap now. Ball is on the near side hash. Ullman gets it going left side. Around the tackles. Got some room. Around the edge. Going to get at least five from it. A little bit more. Good piece of running from Mason Ullman. Ullman, junior running back for these Comets here. Ten and a half left in the first, still scoreless. Ball all the way to the 47-yard line. It is third down and two. Third down and two so far. And four plays, 29 yards in for these Comets on this drive. And one first down, trying to get a second. As we said, there were four for 17 in week five against the Trojans on third down. And Salmon trying to point at the football down there, and officials taking a look at it, getting a, getting a ball swap on there. Must have a damaged football. Identified by the opposing QB there, got the swap, and they're getting the respot here. Ten minutes left in the opening quarter. One receiver split on each side of the field. A pair of tight ends are in. Ullman on the right hip of Salmon now. Says go out wide and he does. Runs out. Salmon going to keep it going around the right tackle. Trying to cut it inside. He gets enough for the first. Well, Comments start this one off one and one on third down conversions. Get a fresh set of downs, and now they're in Trojan territory at their 48. Trojan defense allowing 150 yards per game on the ground in conference play. 
a main thing of what Mayville does this year. Mayville State puts it on the ground quite a bit, as you can see in this early part here. Same set for the Comet. Snap to Salmon. Fake the handoff. Allman rolling right side, near side. Tried to find the same man he found earlier. Big number nine, Derek Frederick, the backup tied in. Couldn't find him that time. Falls incomplete on the rollout. Would have been a good catch and possible first down there. The drop stops the clock. 9-10 left in the opening quarter. Second and 10. Trojans want to uh, avoid the penalties today. Back when they played Mayville State in week five, had nine penalties for 83 yards. Want to limit those here today. Ball between the two hashes. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon in the pistol. Taking the snap. Handoff fake to Ullman. Pass far side. Davison with the catch. Trying to stretch for more yardage. Tackle made by, looks like, Blake Duran on that far side. Yes, indeed. Davison and uh, Salmon connect for the first time here today. Davison, the only wide receiver on this team with uh, 200 plus receiving yards. No other receiver has even 200 on the year so far. Comets coming back up to the line. Two receivers near side, one far. Ball's on the far side hash. Salmon alone in the backfield. Taking the snap, going to keep it, going up the middle with it, find some room, burst out right side, 30, 25, 20, 10, Salmon taken down inside the five. Nothing but a seam for Tim Salmon to run all the way through and burst through, running past Marsh's house when he was able to track him down, though, but not until he got deep inside this Case IH red zone. Find reliable Case IH equipment for both for your farming operation in the Case IH red zone at Lake County International in Madison. Deep into it, indeed, all the way to the four-yard line. The keeper by Salmon. Got one receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon in the pistol. Behind him, Ullman. Falls on this near side hash now. They can snap. Hand off, Ullman. Nowhere to go. At the line, stuffed up by the Trojans. Murphy in on it. Looks like Brueggemann had something to say about it as well. Trojans need to stop here. Can't allow the early score in this first quarter. 7.15 left in the first. Ball still on the near side hash. The loss of two yards by the Trojans there. Brueggemann and uh, Murphy on the stop. Brueggemann coming into the game with 48 tackles on the season. Same set for the Comets. Ullman moved up to the left hip and spread out wide. Salmon, quick pass to him, far side at the 10. Catches it. Brueggemann gets over there, doesn't get the tackle, and he runs into the end zone. Touchdown, Comets. Comets get on the board first and strike at the Dan Beacon Track Complex. Going to see if they can get to attempt the point after here. Going to come to attempt the point after now. Mitch is named earlier, Braden Lacombe. And the point after attempt is good. It's a 7-0 lead. Comets over Trojans. Mayville State with the lead at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. 6.48 left to play in the opening quarter. Going to take a break, and when we come back, see if the Trojans can answer right here on Jammin' Country 103. Get the power you need for your farm equipment. The power of peace of mind that dependable Senex lubricants deliver. With decades of proven off-road performance, backed by the industry-leading Senex Total Protection Plan warranty, Senex heavy-duty diesel engine oils, hydraulic fluids, gear lubricants, and greases are formulated to provide superior protection for load-bearing equipment. The power you need to keep your business running like a well-oiled machine. You can find Senex lubricants at f and Co-op Oil, West Highway 34, Madison. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Comet strike strike first. Salmon finds Ullman out of the backfield, and they runs it in for a touchdown after the reception. And 7-0 lead. 
Mayville State over Dakota State. The Dan Beacom Track Complex. We've got 648 in this opening quarter. We're going to see if the Trojans can answer back on offense. Three and out the first time around. Negative yardage and a punt away. Got a lot of catching up to do. Kicking off here. Lakeham. Ball going far side. Going to visit Austin Lake again. He's going to return from the five. On the far side, got some blocking in front of him. Gets past the 30, tries to spin out of it. Taken down at the 32. Still a good return there for Lake. And that is indeed going to be to the, well, it looks like they might have marked him 33. Good little progress there from Lake. Good couple of returns definitely needed for the Trojans, even though they couldn't cash in first time out. Let's see what they do here. 10 play, 82 yard drive for the Comets to get in for the score to open this one up. Let's see what these Trojans can do. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense because like, if it stays the same, then why do, we, why do you need to put it in? You got one receiver far side for Dakota State. Hedick in the pistol behind him, Ortman. Ball between the two hashes, Hedick with the snap and there's a whistle out there. We may have a false start and a flag. Oh, nope, offense. delay of game for the Five Trojan game. offense. And the running back out there right now, it's actually Iverson. That is the first penalty of the game here. Five yards against the Trojans. We talked about what they needed to avoid earlier, and that's penalties. In conference play, they've got 31 penalties for 217 yards. First and 15 now. Running back is Iverson. Faking the handoff to him. Had it going to keep it going around the right side. Can't get past the edge. Only going to get one yard out of it, but at least he got something. Taken down. Going to be second down and 14 now for the Trojans. Not a whole lot on that first play. Trojans going to try something different now. Gabe Kiso checking in as well as Austin Lake. Checking out Keeney and Owen Heath. The tight end. Ball between the two hashes. Clock looking at six minutes left in this opening quarter. Twin split on each side of the field. Ball between the two hashes. Headache taking the snap, looking far side. Got some confusion, rolling out. Nowhere to go with it. Tries to hit his man. Can't find Austin Lake. Had a couple of guys doing the, the same route on that far side. And there was no room to throw the football. And we've got a Comet down on the field. So let's take a break and... Uh, See what they can do and check on him. 5.49 left in the first quarter. 7-0 lead. Comets over Trojans. We'll be back on Jam and Country 103. Wilbur Ellis is a leading provider of innovative solutions and in seed technology, as well as plant protection and nutrition. Wilbur Ellis, located in Chester, South Dakota, providing as grow and decal brands, various field applications, and local plot data, can provide you with expert advice for your acres. Grow smart and reduce loss. Let Wilbur Ellis address your challenges. Contact your Wilbur Ellis representative at 489-2171. At Wilbur Ellis, they never stop looking ahead. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Player down on the field was our player to watch for the Comets, number 15, Jordan Richardson. He's getting – he was briefly helped off the field. He was able to get off under his own power at a little bit of a, a limp, though. So pending to see if we'll see Richardson back in this game. He is the leading tackler for this Comet team by – Almost 20 tackles, so he's going to be sorely missed. Hopefully Trojans can take advantage. Third and 14. Hedick taking the snap. Looking, looking, letting it fly. Finds the man, Nathan Cook, across the field. He runs near side after the reception. Gets all the way to the 37 on the catch and run. Not going to be enough for the Trojan offense to try and take a chance on the fourth down, so... Punt unit making their way on out here. Trojans once again can't convert on third down. Only three plays, four yards on this drive. Three total yards in the game so far for the Trojans. And an 0-2 start on third down. Punting away, Cole Siliason. 
Might get a good bounce from it, and he does. It bounces right to the Comet, though. Trojans miss the tackle. Caden Neen can't corral him. He finds the outside edge all the way to about the 35, maybe. Looks like that's going to be right about where they mark him. Maybe a little bit more, 36, 37. 36 it is. And that's the second punt away for the Trojans. Two, three and outs, and a total of just three yards to show for it. Not what you want to see if you're these these Trojans here. Not looking a whole lot different from the last time they played these guys. We'll see what this offense can cook up for the next time they come out. Pending JV on Davison. Or uh, not JV on Davison. Jordan Richardson is back in this game. 452 left in the opening quarter. Mayville State football at the 36. One receiver split on each side of the field. Running back on the left hip of Salmon. Not a new, got a new guy in there. That's going to be the backup, Daniel Neville, the freshman, number 22. He's got some room on, the, room on the outside edge and a first down and more from Neville on his first carry. Big time run from Neville on his first tote of the game. That's going to be a good uh, almost 20-yard gain there. They started from the 36, and they're across midfield. 17-yard gain. And these guys are all the way into Trojan territory at their 47. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon in the pistol. Now he's got Neville on his left hip. He'll take the snap. Hand off Neville. Going up. Got some room left side. Taken down by a pair of Trojans. Main man in on the action. Chris Geepy Bapala. Neville with a good piece of running so far. Got another five yards out of that carry. So two carries for 22 yards for Mr. Neville in his first two totes. 340 left in the first quarter. 7-0 lead, Mayville State still on top. Got solid attendance here for the Dakota State fans on this near side, home side here. Ball on the far side, Hash. One receiver split on each side of the field. In motion, the running back, Salmon, pumping. Going to let it fly down the field. Big time shot. Two guys in coverage. And overthrown, uncatchable football. Trying to hit his guy, Javion Davison, for the deep ball. Had double coverage on him. Blake Duran, Mason Lloyd, draped all over him. Incomplete pass, third and five. We've seen... These comments convert on third down a couple of times now. Can they do it here? Probably the furthest back they've been on third down so far. Not saying a whole lot because it's only five yards. Clock stopped at 318. Two receivers near side, one far. Ball's in the far side hatch. Salmon alone in the backfield, taking the snap, looking. Davison coming across. Nowhere to go with it. Got some pressure in the backfield. Salmon rolling out, looking. Still going to have to run it now. Going to run it at the 40, forced out of bounds. Going to still make a few yards out of it somehow. And they're going to get all the way for a fourth and two. Just my opinion, but I think the uh, Comets are going to go for this one, and they're going to set this football, and they're going to get to the line pretty quick, actually, or trying to. Two receivers far side, one near. Sam Malone in the backfield again. Expect a keeper here from Salmon. Fourth and two. Comets tried to go quick, going to look back. Do they still want to go through with this? Do they want to call a timeout? 11, 10 seconds on the play clock. They're going to go through with it still. Fourth and two. Salmon takes a snap, keeping it, going up the middle. And he may have gotten enough. No, they're going to say he was stopped short. Blake Duran and company in on the stop. Gee Bapala in there. J.J. Beck a part of it looks like. Yes, he did. The last man coming up out of the pile is J.J. Beck. And that's our first turnover on downs here in this one, ladies and gentlemen. And a stop on both third and fourth down for the Trojans. And that's what you want to see from this Trojan defense because this team right here, they were marching right on back down the field. But taking the chance here on fourth down instead of punting it and pinning us back deep, costly decision to not do that. Now, Trojan offense is going to come out here and see what they can get done. 
Off the turnover, one receiver split on each side of the field. Ball between the two hashes. Hedick takes the snap. Handoff. Ortman going right side. Breaks it outside. Got some room. Across the 40, 45, across the 50. Tice Ortman across the 45 of the Comets. His first run of the game. And Ortman all the way across the field. There we go. Trojans starting from their own 38. Big time run from Tyus Ortman all the way to the 45 of those comments. Seventeen yard run from Ortman. It's the same same length run that Neville had on his first carry. Fun fact for you. That headache with the snap. Gonna try it. He faked the handoff, but they lose the football. It gets fumbled. He corrals it. It's gonna be a loss of a couple of yards though. Hedick upset with himself on that one for sure. Heath coming out of the game. Gabe Kiso checking back in at receiver. We're going to have two receivers near side, one far. Ball between the two hashes. Running back, Ortman still. On the right hip of Hedick, he takes a snap. Hand off Ortman. Nowhere to go with it. Stuffed up by the Comets and pushed on back. They're going to lose three yards on that one. And we got a comment down in the secondary. Another comment not feeling too good. Going to get himself off the field. Going to try himself off. That's a good sign. Not needing to be immediately helped by personnel to get off the field. Player down. Let's see who that was. That was number 21, Will Flemons. So a couple of guys in the secondary going down for the comments. Trojans got to think, take advantage here. Two key secondary starters missing from this game right now. Actually, Richardson has checked back in for the Comets. Ball on the far side hash for the Trojans. Two receivers near side. Headache taking the snap. Looking. He's got, oh, he comes, tried to come near side with it to see Kiso, but he had a wide open Owen Heath in the middle of the field. It's a miss on that one by Headache. And that's going to bring up fourth down and 15 and the punt unit making their way on out. Wasting the 17-yard uh, run from Ortman there. Going to be about only 12 yards gained on this drive from the Trojans. They're, long, they're most so far, but still. Got to feel like this is a wasted opportunity here. Not able to take advantage of the injured players that missed some plays and attack those weak spots. Punt away again from Siliason. Got the leg. Going to get a friendly bounce. Will no return expected for... Oh, it's kicked by the Comets. But they pick it up and take it out of bounds. It's going to be at about the 15. Accidental kick there by a Comet player. And he's hearing it from one of those coaches the moment he stepped off that field. But three straight punt aways for the Trojans. Can't do anything with the turnover right there. Had a good run from Ortman of 17 yards, but can't capitalize and punt it away for the third straight time. Now the Comets going to come back on out here now, and they will be indeed at that 15-yard line, their worst starting field position of this game. Eight seconds left in this opening quarter as the clock ticked away on that last drive. Arm receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon taking the snap. Handoff. Ullman going left side. Outside the tackle's got room. Tackled out of bounds. They're going to stop the clock with one second left on it. So the comments are going to get one more. Nope. They're going to say that time ran out, and that's going to be the end of this first quarter. It's a 7 nothing lead. Mayville State over Dakota State in this first quarter at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll see what the second quarter has in store for us right here on Jammin' Country 103. When looking for flowers for someone, or maybe it's a gift to yourself for your home or office, stop by the Floral Shop in Madison. They can help you choose the right flower arrangement. Tell someone they're amazing, pick out something sweet and simple, or just show your love to that special someone with fresh, beautiful flowers from the Floral Shop in Madison. Visit the Floral Shop in Madison online at floralshopmadison.com to see their fresh flowers for all occasions and other great gift ideas. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? 
Get a local independent insurance agent with Auto Owners Insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Visit Cunnert Williams Insurance in Madison today. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth to open up the second quarter of action here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. Mayville State leads 7-0 over Dakota State in their second meeting of the season. Ball on this near side hash. Two receivers near side, one far. It's a second down and five for the Comets. Oldman on the right hip of Salmon. He takes the snap. Handoff. Oldman going right side, trying to get outside the tackle. Stumbles up. Still pushes through and gets enough for a first down. Stumbling and bumbling. Oldman found his way, and they found another fresh set of downs. They have been able to move the ball quite a bit here today. Getting the majority of these first downs here in this game. Trojans only have garnished one here today. That coming on this last drive with the 17-yard Tice Ortman run. Ball on the far side hash. It's the first down at the 26. Our receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon in the pistol. Brings up Ullman to his left hip now. Takes a snap. Fake the handoff, rolling near side, looking for his guy. Lobs it over. Can't get it to his receiver, trying to find the tight end, Kelby Azure. Or Azure, excuse me. Can bring up second and ten now for the Comets. 14.08 left in the first half. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. Going to take a look at some scores around the NAIA and take a look at the first half drive charts as well as the halftime numbers in this game. And some news for you guys. The Trojan volleyball team won their final regular season matchup three sets to nothing over the Mayville State Comets. Hand off to Ullman here. Doesn't really get anywhere at all. It's going to bring up second down from the exact same spot. And I got a last second uh, flag here. And up in arms is Bo Bertram. He, he might have been a part of that. Couldn't see. Flag was in that backfield. Maybe some, some after play antics here. Devontae Murphy pointing in the direction of the Comets. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Mayville State number eight. Passes Indeed, it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct on Mayville, Mayville State's Mason Ullman, the running back, and that's going to back things up. Should be half the distance. Yeah, should be half the distance. So. Well, no, because it was. Not no, sure of our. It should be third because it was after the play. Yeah, yeah, should be third. Not sure of what our uh, third and ten now. We gotta, we'll figure out our our uh, our yardage number on this penalty that's backed us up here. Looks like it's supposed to be a half the distance to the goal penalty. So the penalty should have backed things up a little further, but it was only looks like ten yards maybe. Snap to Salmon, handoff. Going up the middle with it. That's Oldman. He's going to push things back up and make it interesting. Going to be short of that first down. Comets can't convert on third. Haven't been able to convert on their last two. Fourth down now. Punt unit making their way on out. And that's five plays for the Comets there, 16 yards, and they're getting set to punt it. Back to return is Jay Skogerbo. Punting in a way, going to be Caden Johnson for the Comets. Skogerbo, fair catch at the 39. That is the first punt away for... The Mayville State comments here today. Trojans were almost able to get back there and block this punt. But now, offense going to get a chance to come on out here and try it again. 
They're going to be beginning from the 39 this time out. Trojans last time out, they had four plays, 12 yards. For another punt away. We'll see what they can do this time. Now, we've got two receivers near side, one far, ball between the hashes. Headache taking the snap, looking near side, tossed to Iverson out of the backfield, going to run through, cross the 45. Iverson almost got a first. And they're going to say that he does. He doesn't step out until he's in Comet territory. That's a fresh set of downs. Good catch and go from Preston Iverson, and he can certainly go. Going to be, I believe, just the second. The second. Uh, second first down for the Trojans here. Now they're at the 49 here. Clock at just 12 minutes left in the first half. Snap, headache, handoff. Iverson trying to go way outside. There was a pile pushed back over there by Jetland, and he tried to go around it still, but could not. And they're going to lose about three yards due to that. Too much dedication trying to go outside. And Jetland double teamed and pushed back. Now, second and 13 with the loss of three yards. And now, ball on the far side hash. One receiver split on each side. Second down play coming up. Hedick taking the snap, rolling, looking. Nowhere to go with it. Pressure all up in the backfield. Going to let it fly far side. Can't get back to it is Iverson. What they were looking for. Got blown up by the Comet defense here. Nobody open. It's going to bring up third down and 13 for the Trojans here. Clock stopped at 11-10. Ball still on the far side hash for him. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 81. Trojans got to come up with something interesting here. Let's see if they can. It's three plays, just nine yards so far on this drive with, with the loss of yardage. Two receivers near side, one far. Headache taking the snap. Looking far side, looking for Hybertson. Got pressure, having to step up in the pocket. Got pressure from behind, knocked out. Football out as well. Recovered by the Trojan O-lineman who got it. Looks like Mr. Uh, Jack O'Neill was able to corral the football. Hedick did not see the pressure behind him. He had a little bit of time as he had stepped up in the pocket, but could not feel the pressure coming his way. And a nice hit from behind. It's good to uh, see that he was able to get back up for sure. Definitely a, a solid hit. Punt unit coming on out now. Fourth and ten. Siliason set to punt it away. Another four-play drive here for these Trojans and another punt away. Nothing but punts so far in this one. For the Trojans, return a short one that's got a whole lot of air under it, not enough distance. Going to be a bouncer and bounce towards Trojan territory. Comet's going to get the 37 on that one. That'll be their best starting field position in the game so far. Four plays, 12 yards. 12 yards on three consecutive drives for the Trojans, but... No score just yet. Still a 7-0 lead here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex with 10 minutes left in the first half. 7-0 Mayville State on top of Dakota State. <laughs> two receivers near side, too far. Twin split on each side of the field for the Comets. Salmon taking the snap, handoff to... Neville is going up the middle, going to get a big gain on that one again. Eight yards for Neville. Daniel Neville, a good runner for these comments here, underrated. We told you about the uh, running back unit that they have here. Both of those guys, Neville and Ullman, with 100-plus carries on the season. That's going to be a second down and two after the, the tote there. Nine and a half left in the first half. 
Ball on the far side hash. Twins split on each side of the field again. Salmon has Neville on his left hip. He's going to take the snap. Roll near side. Going to keep it near side. Gets past the 45. Up ended by Colin Brueggemann. He's going to get enough for the first down, though. Fresh set of downs again for the Comets. They have been garnishing first downs consistently throughout this one. Not a high-scoring affair, similar to the first time these two met. Not taking a whole lot of big shots. First and 10 from the 48 for the Comets. Yeah, 8.40 left in the first half. Still back in the backfield, Neville. One receiver split on each side. Salmon, handoff Neville. Trying to find room up the middle. Finds a small seam, gets a few. Neville being able to find the seams. Got another Comet player down with an injury. Let's let's take a quick break and see what this trainer can uh, assess from our Comet player down on the field. Hope he's okay. 8.28 left in the first half. 7-0 lead. Mayville State on top of Dakota State. We'll be right back on Jamma Country 103. There's nothing like watching the sun rise over your fields, the smell of hope in the air. At Mustang Seeds, we're ready to help you plan for the next planting season and committed to boosting your yields and increasing your profitability with quality seed genetics customized to your farm ground and your way of farming. Lock in preseason cash discounts, rewards, and competitive pricing by contacting your local Mustang DSM or dealer. Mustang Seeds, plant with pride. Heartland Energy is your hometown power provider, delivering affordable and reliable energy and services to the city of Madison and surrounding areas. Heartland offers a number of programs to help their customers grow and thrive and wants to be your trusted partner if you're looking to expand your business or if you're in need of low interest financing. Call Heartland Energy today to explore your options at 605-256-6536. Delivering power with a purpose, Heartland Energy is dedicated to delivering reliable energy and services to the city of Madison. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. We were able to get that player off of the field. That was the center, Daniel Suda. At one receiver split on each side now. Salmon takes the snap. Looking far side. Going to let it fly down the field one-on-one. Intercepted by Robert Cage at the 10-yard line. Big time pick from the senior and captain for this Trojan football team. And he dances it off after the interception as well. Deservedly so. There you go, Mr. Cage. He is the player to watch for today's game for a reason, guys. And he made the big play right there that the Trojans needed. There you go, guys. Trojans still in this one. We got ourselves very much a ball game here. There we go. Trojan offense now going to see if they can pick up and keep this thing on a rolling and find the end zone for the first time here today. Let's see what can happen here. Good interception by Cage. Offense out here now. Two receivers far side, one near. Heading in the backfield. Running back looks like Ortman. It is. Toss to Ortman left side. A little bit of room. Finding the edge. Does find the edge. Almost gets a 10-yard gain. Big tote from Tice Ortman. Had some big runs. As soon as he finds a seam, man, he can run upfield. That's what we've missed from Tice Ortman. Here got a second down and one now. A nine-yard tote from Ortman. Ortman definitely been the guy to go to. When he's healthy. Trojans began this drive from the 11-yard line. That is their worst starting field position so far in the game. Two receivers near side, nobody far. Hedick faked the handoff. Ortman rolling near side, looking nowhere to go with it. Going to try and toss it to Lake anyway. Too much on it. Incomplete pass. Brings up third and one. Trojans now with a sticky situation. Comet's got to know that Trojans are going to put the ball on the ground here to get this first down. Too easy to telegraph now at this point going for the shot on uh, second down with only one yard to gain. Trojans with just a couple of first downs here in this one. Need to get as many as possible to keep drives alive. Third and one play. 7-19 left in the first half. Trips near side. 
Ortman, the running back. Had it, going to keep it. Going to stumble through and get enough for the first down. Good keeper from Trey Hedick. Faking the handoff to Ortman most certainly helped things out there. Fresh set of downs for the Trojans. Getting out of their own red zone now. The Case IH red zone where you can find reliable Case IH equipment. It's both powerful and efficient. Only available in red at your Case IH dealer, Lake County International. Got trips near sign. Jamal Brown is checked in for the Trojans. No receivers far side. Ortman in the game at running back on the right hip. Now going in motion on the left side, wheeling out. Headache taking the snap, letting it fly. Wide open, Roger Moore across the 50, 40. Nobody in front of him, 30, 20. Just one man to beat, stopping and cutting inside. Across the 10, ball punched out, picked up by Austin Lake into the end zone, No Touchdown, Trojans. A disgusting turn of events for the Trojans, but they find the end zone nonetheless. Austin Lake, his blocker in the right place at the right time. Roger Moore, you can see it in his body language, so disappointed at the fumble. Loss of football, didn't get the touchdown that should have been his. But guys, we got the touchdown, and that's what his teammates are trying to pep him up. Hey, good run, we got in the end zone anyway. It's okay, Roger Moore, J.J. Beck, everybody, Gabe Kiso, all the players possible coming to Roger Moore for the congratulations. And the point after attempt coming up. Oh, it's it's lost by Siliuson. Throw it up, throw it up, throw it up, throw it up. Aiden Jane is going to have to corral it and just run the foot. Nowhere to go with it. No emergency play available. It's no good. It's a 7-6 lead. Comet still on top by one after the Trojan score and misconversion attempt there. Or miss point after they got lost by Silius in 629 left in this first half. Trojans get on the board, but still trail by one. Comets ball when we come back on Jammed Country 103. Madison has all your beverage needs. Pull up to the drive through window, we are always greeted with a smile. MDL has a large selection of fountain, bottle, and canned beverages, plus snacks, convenience store items, and gas pumps to top off your tank. MDL and Madison is open every morning at 5. Make sure to like MDL on Facebook to see more cheap prices every day, because discount is their middle name. MDL, it's where customers always go. You love MDL. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Weird turn of events there on that touchdown play from the Trojans. A big wide open shot to Roger Moore. Well, he got all the way down the field to the 10-yard line. Ball got punched out and recovered by Austin Lake to be picked up into the end zone for the first Trojan score of this game. And then no extra point attempt was available due to the inerrant snap to Siliuson. Missed it on the catch and couldn't get the ball set for the point after attempt. And the kickoff, no return from the Comets there. They're going to come out to the 25 for a first and 10. But the Trojans do get on the board. They're still tying, they are uh, still tabulating things here for uh, what happened at the end of that sequence. They're having to uh, figure out how you put it all together here for this uh, for the statistics. We've got it on our drive chart here. Four plays, 89 yards down the field for that touchdown. The Roger Moore slash Austin Lake touchdown. Too bad you can't give half touchdowns in football. That would that would <laughs> this would be one of those rare occasions where you try that. Salmon taking the snap, handoff up the middle. Ullman nowhere to go at all. Ullman got nowhere on that one. It's second down and ten. 6.15 left in the first half. Comments on their last drive. Let's see what they did on their last drive. They had four plays for 14 yards. And that interception to Cage. Last two drives combined, the Comets only got 30 yards. They had 82 yards on their first drive of the game that found the end zone. Now second down play. Trips far side. One receiver near alone in the backfield. Sam going to keep it trying to go up the middle. Meets a whole bunch of Trojans. Dwyer and company right there to say, where are you going, little guy? It's going to be a loss of yards right there for the Comets. Just one yard loss, though, surprisingly enough. Third and 11. Another chance to convert on third down for the Comets. They've been over on their last few. 
Third and 11 for the Trojan defense. 5 10 left in the first half. Trips far side, one receiver near. It's an empty set still. Again for Salmon. Ball between the two hashes. A little confusion in coverage far side from the Trojans. Salmon taking the snap, looking far side. Going to try and take the shot again. Oh, man, wide open down the field. Caught at the 38-yard line. Cage trying to catch up there. And they're not going to be able to get to him. He gets to the end zone, and that's a touchdown. You can see the confusion on the far side before this play began, and it showed with a wide open man on the far sideline of the field. And that might have been the man, Zyler Carlson, and it was Zyler Carlson with a big catch and go there. Wide, stinking open on the far side was Carlson. The young freshman gets a big-time play, and they get on the board once again. Do the comments. Just three plays, 75 yards down the football field. Now here comes the point-after attempt from Lakeham. Going up and through the upright, and good. 14-6 now. Mayville State on top of Dakota State by another, by a score once again. 4.43 left in the first half. Trojans going to have to answer that answer when we come back on Jim Country 103. Giving back is rewarding. It makes you feel good and strengthens our connection to others. But did you know it can also put cash in your pocket? Interlakes Area United Way's 2024 campaign drive is underway, and you're invited to take the 15 by 15 challenge. Pledge at least $15 a month for the upcoming year and turn your form in by November 15th to be eligible to win a $500 Visa gift card courtesy of East River Federal Credit Union. Give online at interlakesunitedway.org or talk to your employer about payroll deduction. You can also mail your form and donation to Interlakes Area United Way, P.O. Box 132 in Madison. It feels good to give back. Sweeten the deal with the 15 by 15 challenge. Visit interlakesunitedway.org for details. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. The Comets strike again on a big play to Zyler Carlson on the far side of the field on some blown coverage from the Trojans. 14-6 now on return now from Mason Lloyd. Got some room far side. Tripped up at the 30-yard line. Thought he was going to have a little bit more room, but no cigar there for the Trojans. They're going to begin at the 31, thanks to a little bit of progress on that return there. Lloyd there on that return. First and 10 for the Trojans beginning at the 31. Ball's going to be on the far side hash. Four thirty-six left in this first half. Two receivers near side. Nobody far. In motion. Far side. Preston Iverson going on a wheel route. Headick, pump fakes, looks downfield, still tries to toss it. No longer there is Austin Lake. Going to fall incomplete. Offensive lineman looking for a possible call there, saying they got held, trying to plead their case to the official, Joseph Taylor and Tyler Jetland are. Going to be incomplete regardless. Second down now. Second and 10, 429 left in this first half. 14-6 lead. Mayville State still on top in this one. They've already scored more points than they did in the last game against the Trojans, but so have the Trojans in this game. They scored. Trips near side. Headick taking the snap, looking. Where is he going to go with it? One-on-one -on -one Austin Lake. A little too much on it. Held, and they're going to throw the flag on this one. Two flags. Pass interference most likely, and we're going to get this football moving on down the field. Flag going to be thrown against the, the main man, that uh, player to watch for us here today, Jordan Richardson. You can watch him. And you can watch him pass interference right there and get the flag thrown. Now they're chit-chatting about it. I wonder if they'll discuss if it'll be a hold. Pass interference. Defense. And there it is, their official call right there, pass interference. Automatic first down. That is the second penalty on the Comets today. Both big penalties. Two for 29 yards so far. Trojans with just one. 
Now they're going to get all the way to the 41. No. 46. 46. Excuse me. For a first down and 10, just outside of Comet territory here. Clock stopped at 422. That's what we got left in the first half. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the Wilbur Ellis halftime show. Two receivers far side, one near in motion, tied in right to left. Snap, Hedick, handoff, fake to Iverson, dropping back Hedick. Looking nowhere to go with it, trying to toss it over there anyway. That play got blown up immediately, but there's a flag in the middle of the field now. And maybe our offensive line finally got what they've been pleading about. Maybe a hold. It was finally caught by the officials there. He's pointing towards the Mayville side. Oh, no, an eligible man downfield for the Trojans. An eligible receiver downfield. Dakota State, number 51. Five yard penalty. Looks like it... Uh, couldn't see, couldn't hear what uh, number they said right there, but ineligible man down the field. Nonetheless, it's going to back it up five yards. A little muffled there on the uh, the number announcement, but a five-yard penalty nonetheless for the Trojans, their second one. I'm going to quit talking about their penalties because both times I've mentioned anything about their penalties, they've gotten one immediately. <laughs> so let's try and avoid that, shall we? 14-6 lead still here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. Ball is on the far side hash after the penalty. First and 15 for the Trojans. One receiver split on each side of the field. Hedick in the gun. Snap. Looking. Nowhere to go with it. Got some pressure in the pocket. Trying to roll out near side. One-on-one -on -one Roger Moore. No, he tosses it to Iverson, who is going to get enough to get near midfield on the catch. If Hedick would have waited just a split second longer, Roger Moore was able to break loose and try and get up field. But you take what you can get while it's available. On that first down play, you were able to get nine yards out of it. Now you have second and seven. Excuse me, you got uh, eight yards out of it. Right on the 49, right on the edge of Comet territory here. 335 left in the first half. Snap to Hedick. Looking far side. One on one. Michael Hybertson got the room. Oh, in and out of the hands of Hybertson as he looks to the sky, knowing, oh, that was mine. He should have had that one. A crucial second down drop there for Hybertson. Would have been a major play. He had the room right in both hands and right out. Third and seven now for the Trojans. Ball has come to the near side hash now. Getting some calls over here from the sideline on this play here. Anderson dialing it up here. Coach Josh Anderson in his 15th season here looking to get another conference win before this conference disbands after this season. Taking the snap, faking the handoff to Iverson. Pass far side, Austin Lake, good catch. Kept his feet, spun around, and got the first down for the Trojans. Good catch and go there from Austin Lake. He was almost off balance first. Thank goodness somebody wasn't in the area to give him a pop. Good fresh set of downs now for the Trojans. All the way to the 42-yard line of Mayville State. Trojans trying to march on down. They haven't had a drive longer than four plays all day long so far, guys. Play number five, he's on the way. Both tight ends in motion left to right there on the near side now. Two receivers near side as well. Hedick taking the snap, looking, firing. Kiso, one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, in and out of the hands of the defender, Will Flemons, who got hurt earlier and came back in. Almost had the interception. If Gabe Kiso had a, had those hands out to maybe get the dropped interception, he might have been able to grab that. But a tough one to... Uh, to decipher on that pass from Headache. Regardless, it falls incomplete. We're looking at second down. Now clock has stopped at 237. This is officially the longest drive of the day for the Trojans at five plays going on six. Five plays, just 27 yards so far. The second longest drive, yardage-wise. Two receivers near side. Headache taking the snap. Hits the man, Owen Heath, on the run, coming near side. He's only going to get a few yards, maybe four they give him. They do give him four. We'll take four. That's going to set up third down and six now. 
It's manageable for the Trojans here. Anderson going to have to dive in his bag of 30 manageable plays. Now let's see what we got going here. We're going to have some guys getting lined up here. Roger Moore going to be the lone man near side. Two receivers far. Hedick is in the pistol. Iverson behind him. Ball near side hash. Taking the snap. Hedick dropping, looking. Roger Moore. Catch. 30-yard line. Cutting back inside. Moore making one guy miss. Two guys miss. He's inside. 25-yard line. Roger Moore. Big catch and first down. Moore determined to make the most of these plays after the unfortunate fumble after big catch and go earlier. I bet you he's going to be looking to get himself in the end zone here. If I'm Anderson, i got to dial something up for Roger Moore here, right? It's, it's only right. Austin Lake got his first touchdown of the season in a weird way, corralling that football and getting his, getting his butt into the end zone there. And, yes, it was indeed his first touchdown of the year. 39 receptions, 413 yards coming into this game in his first touchdown. Toss to Iverson near side. He's going to have to cut back inside. That's going to be a loss of two. And we got a stoppage of play. Did somebody call the timeout? No official word. Okay, timeout Trojans with 128 left in the first half. We'll take this timeout with them. 14-6. Mayville State still on top in this one. We'll see what the Trojans cook up out of the timeout, and we'll be back on Jimmy Country 103. I'm at dinner. I'm having wine. I'm finishing dessert. I'm ordering another bottle. I'm driving home. I'm getting pulled over. I'm getting handcuffed. I'm getting a DUI. Saturation patrols are coming to Lake County. If you plan on drinking, always have a designated driver. Brought to you by the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety at this station. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Fresh out of the timeout, we've got a minute, 28 seconds left in the first half. Mayville State still on top of your Dakota State Trojans, 14-6. Trojans marching down, though, their longest drive of the day at eight plays, going on nine here on a second down and 12. Two receivers, trips far side, actually. One receiver near. Iverson in the backfield, faking the handoff. Headache, pressure, rolling out far side, dropping back real, real far. Nowhere to go with the football. Still going to let it fly in the direction of somebody. And that's going to fall incomplete. Now we're going to have a third down and 12 for the Trojans. That's one thing about uh, Headache we got to find some adjustment for. When, when he's got the pressure in the backfield, his rollouts, and when he's uh, spinning back the other way, he doesn't go left or right his direction. He goes backwards. That's left and right on our screen and you guys watching at home on YouTube. But if he gets tackled back there, it's almost like an average of 15 yards. So glad he's got enough quickness to get away. Trips far side. One guy near. Headache dropping back. Looking. Ooh, that's a little bit of pressure. He's rolling out far side. There's nowhere to go with it. Coming across his face. There's a wide open man. Hobertson. He's got the catch. Going just almost into the KSIH red zone. He's right outside of it. Uh, just, yeah. Yeah, just a little. Could have been a penalty call there on that uh, line there. But no flags were thrown. And it's fourth and seven. Looks about like seven from here. Yes, fourth and seven here. For the Trojans, we're going to have a timeout for the Trojans, looks like, as well. Yes, the second timeout for the Trojans. We're going to keep this one here. Trojans are uh, going to likely get set up for the field goal attempt here. Want to come away with some points. Don't want to chance it and try and lob anything into the end zone and possibly not come away with anything. Likely going to send Aiden Janes out here. But we'll see. Aiden James kind of standing in the back of the back, back of the pack here with his hands in his warmers. Looking like they might draw up a play here and go for the touchdown. What would you do here, guys? You guys are watching. You guys are listening. If you're Coach Anderson, you're cooking up this play for the Trojans. This is your longest drive, your second most productive drive in terms of yardage. It's definitely your longest. And... Your last chance with the football in the first half because the Comets will get the ball to receive the second half kickoff. They deferred on the opening kickoff, and Trojans started off with the football. So 
This might be one of those times it's like, mm, James, let's sit you down, actually. We want to go for this one. And they are going to indeed go for it, guys. Fourth and seven. Trojans need a first here. Just need the first down. Don't have to go for the end zone. Jamal Brown checking in. Trojans going to have trips near side. One receiver far. Iverson still the back in the backfield on the right hip of Hedick. He takes a snap. Looking at Hybertson only. One-on-one -on -one Hybertson. And we got a pass interference call on the far side of the field. And Mr. Will Flemons is irate about it on the far side, jumping around his teammates, trying to corral him and slow him down. He is confused. But it looked like we had a hold, so I'm not arguing with anybody. Flag was thrown there. They're throwing those flags like baseballs, you know, getting warmed up out there, guys. <laughs> you see the poses out there. They think they're the quarterback out here tossing these. Pass interference going to be on Will Flemons officially again. All penalties for Mayville State in this game have been big ones. Yeah, three penalties for uh, 44 yards here. And it's a first and goal deep inside the Case IH Red Zone for the Trojans. For service and advice you can trust, stop into the Case IH Red Zone at Lake County International in Madison. They're from the eight-yard line, no seven-yard line right now. Trojans, first and ten. They're first and goal. Lone receiver near side, Jamal Brown. Toss faked left side to Ortman. Nobody open. A little short trying to hit Austin Lake. We saw it hit the turf. That's going to be incomplete now. Second down coming up for Dakota State. Well into double-digit plays now for the Trojans. Play number 12 on the way. And we've got a, another injured comment. This one in the secondary as well. Let's take the quick break once again and see if the medical staff can get him up and off the field and make sure he's okay. 33 seconds left in the first half. Quick break, and we'll be right back on Jammin' Country 103. Quick bite to eat or your favorite ice cream treat. The place to go is the Dairy Queen in Madison. Try one of the signature snack burgers, chicken strips, or the rotisserie style chicken bites in a salad bowl or basket with fries. And don't forget to grab your favorite blizzard. If you haven't tried the DQ app yet, you are missing out. You can save time and skip the line by ordering ahead and your order will be ready when you get there. Plus, get exclusive deals and earn reward points all from your smartphone with the DQ app. Good luck to the Trojans from the Dairy Queen in Madison. Trust your farming operation with the locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. With their state-of-the-art facility, Farmer's Ag Center offers trusted advice when it comes to fertilizer, seed, and crop protection products. Area producers can expect accurate and timely advice, including efficient delivery and application of products during all seasons. Locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. The leaders in the field, the leaders in customer service, proud to serve area farmers and proud to support area communities. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Two receivers near side, one far. Headick with a snap, one-on-one. -on -one. Michael Hobertson, touchdown, top corner, Trojans! Big-time catch from Hobertson, and that gets the Trojans in closer range to potentially tie this up. You can expect the football team to stay out there and go for two, and they will indeed. Twelve plays to get on down the field for a score. 12 plays, 69 yards down the field for these Trojans. And they will definitely be going for two here. Timeout. Comet's going to call the timeout here. We're going to keep it right here. Trojans getting some points on the board. The most the uh, Comets have allowed in uh, a few weeks now. Only giving up seven to Waldorf a couple of weeks ago. Now Trojan's going to attempt this two-point conversion to try and tie this bad boy up before Mayville State gets a brief little shot here at the end of this first half and then starts off the second half with the football. Good play there. Hybertson and Hedick have been a phenomenal combination, guys. Let me tell you about it. Hybertson just one yard short of the team lead in receiving yards and really became a factor once Hedick really got a hold of the reins here. Not in the Mayville State game, but the one to follow uh, against Dickinson on the road. That's when Hybertson came alive, and he's he's he's, he's a new leader in receiving uh, yards now after this first half here today. And uh, going for two here now, Trojans, two receivers near side, one far. Ortman in the backfield with Hedick. Snap, fake handoff to Ortman, quick pass, catch, 
Right inside the end zone. Will they come? Oh, no! He's right on the line. Maybe the feet were outside of it. Austin Lake on the catch. And they're going to say he was not in. The football didn't cross the pylon there. So no good on the conversion attempt. 14-12. Trojans trail by two now after the score. 27 seconds left in the first half. We're going to take a quick break for 30 seconds and be back for a kickoff to finish this first half. Right here on Jammin' Country 103. Trust your farming operation with the locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. With their state-of-the-art facility, Farmer's Ag Center offers trusted advice when it comes to fertilizer, seed, and crop protection products. Area producers can expect accurate and timely advice, including efficient delivery and application of products during all seasons. Locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. The leaders in the field, the leaders in customer service. Proud to serve area farmers and proud to support area communities. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. Hedick finds Hybertson for the touchdown in the top left corner of the end zone. And we get this thing within two because the Trojans couldn't convert the two-point conversion attempt. Aiden James with the kickoff now. It's going to go over the head of the Comets and bounce into the end zone. And they're going to begin at the 25. It's going to be back-to-back times where they begin in the 25 due to the kickoff from Aiden James. See what this Trojan defense can do with this final 27 seconds. Maybe expect the uh, Comets to try a uh, shot or two, depending on how many plays they decide to run. They could run one play and uh, let the clock run out for the first half here. Not everybody is uh, willing to take the chances downfield in the final seconds. You know, some teams, whether it's pro, college, or high school, like to take those last second Hail Marys and see what they can do with their some of their best athletes and playmakers and see if they can get those last second scores. But you can see the little formation here, Neil formation. Salmon's going to take that knee, and that's going to end your first half here. And it will indeed. Both teams trotting off the field now, and that's your first half of action, guys. 14-12 is our score at the half. Mayville State leads Dakota State at the half. Now we're going to enter into our Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. Make sure you guys stick around for the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. Plenty in it before we get back to the second half of football action. So, so stick with us right here on Jammin' Country 103. For your farm equipment, the power of peace of mind that dependable Senex lubricants deliver. Wilbur Ellis is a leading provider of innovative solutions in seed technology, as well as plant protection and nutrition. Wilbur Ellis, located in Chester, South Dakota, providing Asgro and DeKalb brands, various field applications, and local plot data, can provide you with expert advice for your acres. Grow smart and reduce loss. Let Wilbur Ellis address your challenges. Contact your Wilbur Ellis representative at 489-2171. At Wilbur Ellis, they never stop looking ahead. Don't miss your favorite new Madison tradition. It's the second annual Parade of Lights hosted by KJAM Radio. The Parade of Lights will travel down Egan Avenue on Saturday, December the 2nd, starting at 5.30 p.m. If your business group or organization would like to have an entry in the Parade of Lights, you can download a registration form at AmazingMadison.com. The second annual Parade of Lights brought to you by Heartland Energy, First Bank and Trust, East River Electric, The Dairy Queen, Montgomery's, and Sioux Valley Energy. Get the power you need for your farm equipment. The power of peace of mind that dependable Senex lubricants deliver. With decades of proven off-road performance backed by the industry-leading Senex Total Protection Plan warranty, Senex heavy-duty diesel engine oils, hydraulic fluids, gear lubricants, and greases are formulated to provide superior protection for load-bearing equipment. The power you need to keep your business running like a well-oiled machine. You can find Senex lubricants at FM Co-op Oil, West Highway 34, Madison. Wilbur Ellis is a leading provider of innovative solutions in seed technology, as well as plant protection and nutrition. Wilbur Ellis, located in Chester, South Dakota, providing Asgro and DeKalb brands, various field applications, and local plot data, can provide you with expert advice for your acres. Grow smart and reduce loss. Let Wilbur Ellis address your challenges. Contact your Wilbur Ellis representative at 489-2171. At Wilbur Ellis, they never stop looking ahead. 
When looking for flowers for someone, or maybe it's a gift to yourself for your home or office, stop by the Floral Shop in Madison. They can help you choose the right flower arrangement. Tell someone they're amazing, pick out something sweet and simple, or just show your love to that special someone with fresh, beautiful flowers from the Floral Shop in Madison. Visit the Floral Shop in Madison online at floralshopmadison.com to see their fresh flowers for all occasions and other great gift ideas. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? Get a local independent insurance agent with Auto Owners Insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Visit Cunder Williams Insurance in Madison today. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. We're in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show now. And the Halftime Show is brought to you by Wilbur Ellis in Chester. Contact your local field experts today to help you grow smart, increase productivity, and reduce loss. Wilbur Ellis, where they never stop looking ahead. Let's take a look at your Farmer's Ag Center scoreboard. It's 14-12 at the half. Mayville State on top of Dakota State. All updates tonight, courtesy of your Farmer's Ag Center scoreboard, by the way. Speaking of scores... You know what the score of this one is. Let's take a look at some scores around the NAIA. Some other teams got some early action today, too. Let's take a look at how things are going. Starting off with the University of Fort Lauderdale at North American. That's a close one with nine minutes and eight seconds left in the third. Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale up 21-20, a one-point lead. The final for Madonna at Siena Heights. Siena Heights dominated 77-14 to in that game. Another final game got Southeastern out of Florida at St. Thomas. St. Thomas won 33-21. to Florida Memorial on the road at Thomas with 1 minute and 15 seconds left in the game. Florida Memorial going to take that one 37-24 as they're on top right now. More scores. Marion was on the road at Indiana Wesleyan. Indiana Wesleyan with a two-point victory, 42-40. Taylor was on the road at Lawrence Tech. Lawrence Tech 41-37 over Taylor. Concordia out of Michigan on the road at St. Francis out of Indiana. St. Francis won 34-24. Olivet Nazarene at St. Xavier. St. Xavier won 38-21. Graceland on the road at Culver Stockton out of Missouri. Graceland with a dominating win, 47-7. Georgetown out of Kentucky at Cumberlands. Georgetown won 31-17 on the road. Mid-American Nazarene on the road at Missouri Valley. Mid-American Nazarene with a close one. Close victory, 28-24. Benedictine on the road at Missouri Baptist. Benedictine, 34-16 victory on the road. Doan out of Nebraska at Concordia. Concordia with a 55-26 victory. Bethel out of Kansas at Bethany. Bethel with a 27-3 victory. Dort out of Iowa on the road at Morningside. Dort with a 28-24 victory over Morningside. Sterling on the road at Avila out of Missouri. Avila 41-10 over Sterling. Midland at Hastings. Hastings with a victory 37-32. Baker on the road at Central Methodist. Baker a commanding victory 58-7. Northwestern on the road at Dakota Wesleyan. Northwestern 49-28 playing spoilers for D-Dub on their senior day. Clark out of Iowa at Peru State. Clark with a 31-17 victory today. Briar Cliff on the road at Briar Cliff out of Iowa on the road at Jamestown out of North Dakota. Briar Cliff 39-30 over Jamestown. Evangel out of Missouri on the road at Southwestern. Evangel 17-14 over Southwestern. McPherson at Friends out of Kansas. Friends with a 66-17 a victory over McPherson. Grandview on the road at William Penn out of Iowa. Grandview with a 35-6 victory on the road. Judson at St. Ambrose. St. Ambrose 41-21 over Judson. Kansas Wesleyan at Ottawa. This game went to overtime, and Ottawa came away victorious 27-24 in OT. Game still going on. The final minute and a half of Tabor and St. Mary. St. Mary likely to come away with it 40 to 31 right now with that final minute and a half. Montana Tech at Montana State Northern. Montana Tech with a shutout 28 nothing. 
Cumberland out of Tennessee on the road at Lindsey Wilson. Lindsey Wilson with a 45-2 victory over Cumberland. Bethel out of Tennessee on the road at Campbellsville, Kentucky. Bethel leading 36-14 with 10 minutes to go in the game. Texas Wesleyan on the road at Langston, Oklahoma. Texas Wesleyan leads 26-6 with 7-10 left in the third. Texas College on the road at Wayland Baptist in Texas. Texas College 38-27 right now over Wayland Baptist with 2.13 left in the third. Montana Western on the road at Carroll out of Montana. Montana Western leading 21-17 with 5.47 left in the third. At halftime, you got Valley City State on the road at Dickinson State today. Dickinson State on top 20-3 over Valley City State. Other games still going on right now. There's only one left. That is still going on. It's South, uh, Southern Oregon and Eastern Oregon. Southern Oregon up 21-17 with 30 seconds before halftime. Other games, six of or five of them, have yet to begin. And one just started. SAGU and Oklahoma Panhandle State 0-0 at the beginning of their game. And those are your score updates from around the NAIA, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, we're going to have some drive charts from the first half for you right here on Jam and Country 103. There's nothing like watching the sun rise over your fields, the smell of hope in the air. At Mustang Seeds, we're ready to help you plan for the next planting season and committed to boosting your yields and increasing your profitability with quality seed genetics customized to your farm ground and your way of farming. Lock in preseason cash discounts, rewards, and competitive pricing by contacting your local Mustang DSM or dealer. Mustang Seeds, plant with pride. Heartland Energy is your hometown power provider, delivering affordable and reliable energy and services to the city of Madison and surrounding areas. Heartland offers a number of programs to help their customers grow and thrive and wants to be your trusted partner if you're looking to expand your business or if you're in need of low interest financing. Call Heartland Energy today to explore your options at 605-256-6536. Delivering power with a purpose, Heartland Energy is dedicated to delivering reliable energy and services to the city of Madison. MDL Madison has all your beverage needs. Pull up to the drive through window, we are always greeted with a smile. MDL has a large selection of fountain, bottle, and canned beverages, plus snacks, convenience store items, and gas pumps to top off your tank. MDL in Madison is open every morning at 5. Make sure to like MDL on Facebook to see more cheap prices every day, because discount is their middle name. MDL is where our customers always go. You love Giving back is rewarding. It makes you feel good and strengthens our connection to others. But did you know it can also put cash in your pocket? Interlakes Area United Way's 2024 campaign drive is underway, and you're invited to take the 15 by 15 challenge. Pledge at least $15 a month for the upcoming year and turn your form in by November 15th to be eligible to win a $500 Visa gift card courtesy of East River Federal Credit Union. Give online at interlakesunitedway.org or talk to your employer about payroll deduction. You can also mail your form and donation to Interlakes Area United Way, P.O. Box 132 in Madison. It feels good to give back. Sweeten the deal with the 15 by 15 challenge. Visit interlakesunitedway.org for details. I'm at dinner. I'm having wine. I'm finishing dessert. I'm ordering another bottle. I'm driving home. I'm getting pulled over. I'm getting handcuffed. I'm getting a DUI. Saturation patrols are coming to Lake County. If you plan on drinking, always have a designated driver. Brought to you by the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety in this station. When you're hungry for a quick bite to eat or your favorite ice cream treat, the place to go is the Dairy Queen in Madison. Try one of the signature Snack Burgers chicken strips or the rotisserie-style chicken bites in a salad bowl or basket with fries. And don't forget to grab your favorite blizzard. If you haven't tried the DQ app yet, you are missing out. You can save time and skip the line by ordering ahead, and your order will be ready when you get there. Plus, get exclusive deals and earn reward points all from your smartphone with the DQ app. Good luck to the Trojans from the Dairy Queen in Madison. 
Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. We're still in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show, guys. Thank you for joining us here in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. Got you caught up on those scores around the NAIA. And now let's take a look at our drive charts for this first half of action here between the Mabel State Comets and the Dakota State Trojans. Let's take a look at our opponents for the day, the Mabel State Comets. They started off hot in this one, but then it's been a big mixed bag ever since then. They started off 10 plays, 82 yards down the field for their first touchdown and made the extra points go along with it. Followed it up with five plays, 26 yards, and a turnover on downs that stifled some momentum. Then the third drive, five plays, 16 yards, and their lone punt away in this game. Followed by four plays, 14 yards, and the interception to Robert Cage on the shot down the field. And then three plays, 75 yards, and a touchdown and a made extra point. And next time around, that other shot was probably the same exact play they were trying to hit earlier when Cage got the interception. But nonetheless, worked the second time, not the first. And then there was the end of the half of the comments. They had uh, three penalties for 43 yards in this one. Now let's take a look at your Trojans, and we'll get to the full summary of the uh, stats when we come back here in a bit in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show, let's look at the Trojans' drive chart, though. They started off with three consecutive three and outs. First one got negative one yards. Second one got four yards. Third one got 12. They were all punts away, of course. And then four plays, 12 yards, punt away again. Four plays, 12 yards, a punt away again. And then Trojans began to ramp up. Four plays, 89 yards down the field for a touchdown. Failed on the extra uh, the point after attempt. Couldn't uh, get the snap to Siliason. And then 12 plays, 69 yards down the field for a touchdown and a failed two-point conversion attempt. So they've gotten the scores in the last couple of drives as they started to rail some things off and put up some yardage. Glad they've turned the tide from the early going with five consecutive punts followed up with two touchdown drives. And Trojans in the first half, just a uh, couple of penalties for 10 yards. Good thing that they are cleaning up things in this one. Those are your drive charts for the first half here in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. We're going to take a uh, another break, and when we come back, we're going to have the half st- the halftime stats in this one, and then we're going to slide on into the second half of action right here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you stick with us. More football to go and a possible Trojan comeback here on Jam and Country 103. Trust your farming operation with the locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. With their state-of-the-art facility, Farmer's Ag Center offers trusted advice when it comes to fertilizer, seed, and crop protection products. Area producers can expect accurate and timely advice, including efficient delivery and application of products during all seasons. Locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. The leaders in the field, the leaders in customer service. Proud to serve area farmers and proud to support area communities. Don't miss your favorite new Madison tradition. It's the second annual Parade of Lights hosted by KJAM Radio. The Parade of Lights will travel down Egan Avenue on Saturday, December the 2nd, starting at 5.30 p.m. If your business group or organization would like to have an entry in the Parade of Lights, you can download a registration form at AmazingMadison.com. The second annual Parade of Lights brought to you by Heartland Energy, First Bank and Trust, East River Electric, The Dairy Queen, Montgomery's, and Sioux Valley Energy. Get the power you need for your farm equipment. The power of peace of mind that dependable Senex lubricants deliver. With decades of proven off-road performance, backed by the industry-leading Senex Total Protection Plan warranty, Senex heavy-duty diesel engine oils, hydraulic fluids, gear lubricants, and greases are formulated to provide superior protection for load-bearing equipment. The power you need to keep your business running like a well-oiled machine. You can find Senex lubricants at FM Co-op Oil, West Highway 34, Madison. Wilbur Ellis is a leading provider of innovative solutions in seed technology, as well as plant protection and nutrition. Wilbur Ellis, located in Chester, South Dakota, providing AsGrow and DeKalb brands, various field applications, and local plot data, can provide you with expert advice for your acres. Grow smart and reduce loss. Let Wilbur Ellis address your challenges. Contact your Wilbur Ellis representative at 489-2171. At Wilbur Ellis, they never stop looking ahead. When looking for flowers for someone, or maybe it's a gift to yourself for your home or office, 
Stop by the floral shop in Madison. They can help you choose the right flower arrangement. Tell someone they're amazing. Pick out something sweet and simple or just show your love to that special someone with fresh, beautiful flowers from the floral shop in Madison. Visit the floral shop in Madison online at floralshopmadison.com to see their fresh flowers for all occasions and other great gift ideas. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? Get a local independent insurance agent with Auto Owners Insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Visit Cunner Williams Insurance in Madison today. Back with you here in the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show, guys. Thank you for joining us here throughout the Wilbur Ellis Halftime Show. We're in the portion of the Halftime Show where we take a look at some of the first half numbers of this game. Got some uh, some of the stats being looked at right now and some adjustments on some of the numbers for uh, uh, the rushing and uh, totals from that big play from the Trojans earlier. But let's get some of the things that we do know out of the way. We do know that the Trojans came back and led in first downs in the first half after for a long time only having the one early first down and no progress after that. Finished first half with a 9-8 first down lead over the uh, over the Comets here in this one. And uh, they lead in total yards in this one as well, 246 to 224 over the Comets in this one. On third down, the Comets have the advantage tonight. Three for five on third down. Trojans just three for eight in this one. Trojans have the advantage on fourth down. They've converted the one that they tried, but the one that the Comets caught, or the one that the, the Comets tried, was not good. 0 for 1 on their fourth downs. Trojans have just a few more plays than the uh, Comets so far in this one, averaging about the same yards per play, 7.9 for the Trojans, 8 for the Comets. No sacks at all for either team in this one. One lone interception by the Trojans was intercepted by Robert Cage, of course, we mentioned earlier here in this game. Trojans so far in this game averaging 10 yards per rush in this one. Um, that's probably a little bit skewed from our, our numbers on here where we have to fix the uh, the rushing issue, but still having a, uh, a decent day football-wise. And uh, Trojans have fumbled the ball a few times, but we're, but we're able to get on top of the football all three times and lose any of those. Trojans behind by just eight seconds in the time of possession. It was 15.04 for the Comets and 14.56 for the Trojans. We'll get the uh, the rest of those first half uh, numbers here figured out for you here in just a second. Getting things switched over. Let's look at how Trey Hedick did in this first half of play. He was 10 for 21 passing for 143 yards and a pair of touchdowns through the air. Touchdown scorers were Austin Lake who picked up the, uh, the fumbled ball by Roger Moore after the big 77-yard uh, catch and go that he lost inside the, the 10 that Lake picked up and trotted into the end zone for a few yards. Got that touchdown in there. And then the other touchdown, Michael Hybertson, a jump ball, top left corner of the end zone for a touchdown for him in this one. It's got to be a presto stack because it, it, going through the play-by-play, we've got it all right. Going through uh, things right here for uh, statistics, having some issues with presto stats, but things on the play-by-play seem to be lining up. So we'll just we'll go with what we got here. The only the issue that we were kind of running into here was just the uh, the rushing yards for for Trey Hedick. Something got uh, put in the wrong spot, so his numbers inflated in the rushing category. But everything else accurate in this one. Your rush or your receiving leader for the Trojans in this one is Roger Moore. He's got a couple of catches for 90 yards, that long of 77. No touchdown though, unfortunately. That ended up going to Austin Lake, as we just mentioned for you here, but. Trojans in this one, they uh, they trail in uh, rushing yards. Mayville leads with 119 rush yards in this game so far. Trojans with 143 pass yards to have the lead. And this one has got our players out on the field. Aiden Jane's getting set to kick this one away to the comments now. Leading tacklers for the Trojans, Caleb Dwyer with five. Bo Bertram with four. Marcus Hausman with four. And we have four Trojans with a half a tackle for loss. A return here, only going to get to barely the 20. He's going to bounce out, though. That's Javion Davison across the 25, 30, 
forced out at about the 35. Somehow he was still standing up and found the room on the edge. Not sure how he got there, managed to get there, but he did. Those are your uh, first half stats for the Trojans in the uh, comments. We'll see how things end up in this second half of action. They're going to give him the 33-yard line, Mr. Davison, on his return. That's going to be the third best field position of the game for the Comets in this one. All right, now we got one receiver split on each side of the field for the Comets. Salmon in the pistol, handoff to Neville, who's the back starting off the second half. Going to get about seven yards on that one is Neville. Neville been a very effective runner so far in this game. Let's go ahead and tell you how Neville did in the first half. He only had four carries, 33 yards, eight yards per tote for Daniel Neville. He's been the uh, the best runner for him so far. Tim Salmon's also had a productive day, six carries for 48 yards, that big 37-yard run. He had to break away for the Comets earlier. Their starting back, Mason Ullman, eight carries, 41 yards for about five yards per tote. Third and four, or second and four, excuse me. Salmon, handoff, Neville coming back there. Brueggemann taking him down right at the line of scrimmage. 32. Creeping in the backfield. Big time tackle from uh, Brueggemann there. J.J. Beck looks like he was in on that action as well. 14-12 still here in this one, of course. Mayville stayed up by a pair. A pair of points, not a pair of scores. 13.30 left in this third quarter. It is third down and four. First half on third down. Comments were three for five. Let's see what they get here. Trips near side. Salmon letting it fly. Javion Davison ahead of Robert Cage. Cage gets his hand on it just in there. So Davison can't corral the football. Perfect timing for Cage to get the hand in and knock the ball out, or else that would have been a monumental play for the Comets. Good defense there from Robert Cage. He's a player to watch for a reason today, ladies and gentlemen. He was going to be big. We knew he was going to be assigned to the number one guy, Javion Davison, and he has been all night. Punt unit out there for the Comets now. Skogerbo back to return. Second punt of the night for the Comets. Almost getting there. We're some Trojan players. That's going to bounce all the way to the 25 and take a rest. And that's where the Trojans will begin the second half of their first drive. Let's see if the Trojan offense can avoid a, avoid a three and out. Each team that started with possession in this game in the beginning of each half, three and out. Now Trojans, see if they can respond the way the Comets did after forcing a three and out to open a half with a touchdown drive. Three plays, just six yards on that drive for the Comets. All right, we got 13 minutes left in the third quarter. One receiver split on each side of the field. Looks like Ortman might be in the backfield. No. Oh, it is, actually. And pass by Hedick on the far side. Could he have hit Austin Lake? That's who it looks like. We'll see once everybody gets up from this pile here, if it was Lake. Mm, no, that was Hybertson, actually. Michael Hybertson with the catch and reception. He's the guy to get up from the bottom of the pile there. Austin Lake not checked in at the moment, actually. That is on me there. Second down and one. Got two tight ends in motion going right to left. Hedick in the pistol behind him. Ortman. Toss to Ortman near side. Going to run through his guy but get tackled. It's a good piece of tackling from the Comets there. Big time tackle from Devin Woods, the 6'3 sophomore. And that's going to be enough, though, for a fresh set of downs for the Trojans. 
Another first down for the Trojans. As we said, Trojans led in first downs 9-8 in the first half. Now they got their 10th one of the day. Coach Randall having a conversation with his guys on this near sideline. Trips far side, two receivers near, empty set for Hedick. Pressure, going to let it fly though, one-on-one, -on -one. Austin Lake, catch made across the 35. Big time play from Austin Lake. Was able to get free at the last second on his defender in coverage, looked like it was Jordan Richardson. That is a big time first down play for the Trojans. That is going to be close to the biggest play of the game. But we had a 77-yarder to Moore earlier. So we take a look at the replay. A few yards of separation at the end for Lake and the first down. All the way to the 33-yard line. Go the Trojans. Trojan offense very much picking up where they left off in the first half. With their back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives, trying to make it a trio of them. Ball is between the two hashes. Snap to Hedick. Looking far side, one-on-one. -on -one. Roger Moore, maybe. No, nowhere to go with it. Hedick going to have to drop back, 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 and toss it out of bounds. Hedick, the, the king of the drop back distance here. <laughs> Love Trey Hedick. That man, he will back up some yardage to avoid some tacklers, and you can see him coming from behind the 50 in uh, original Trojan territory back to where things were all the way up with his team up here. Ball is at the 33. Second down and 10 now. 10-44 left in this third. It's a 14-12 lead. The Comets are on top by two. Play clock, seven seconds. One receiver split on each side of the field. And the pistol, Hedick behind him, Ortman, handoff, Ortman. Going around the guards there, get stopped up by a couple of comments. Still pushing, though. Big time run from Ortman. He just refuses to go down. Saying he's missed too much action. He can't afford to give up any yards at this point. He wants every single one he can get. He's going to check out real quick. Third down, back roll being pushed over to Mr. Iverson. Mr. Preston Iverson coming out here now to take running back duties on third and four. Two receivers far side, one near. Ball is between the two hashes. Hedick sends in motion Iverson on this near side. Wheeling out. Nowhere to go with it. Oh, wide open man, and that's Michael Hybertson. Touchdown, Trojans. There we go. The connections are seamless, and Hybertson finds the end zone again for a Trojan touchdown. And this offense is rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling are the Trojans. Point after attempt here coming from Dakota State. Aiden Jane set to kick it. Kicking up and through the uprights and good. Trojans gain the lead, 19-14. 9.55 left in the third quarter. First lead of the game for Dakota State. We're going to see what the Commons can do when we come back right here on Jam Country 103. There's nothing like watching the sun rise over your fields, the smell of hope in the air. At Mustang Seeds, we're ready to help you plan for the next planting season and committed to boosting your yields and increasing your profitability with quality seed genetics customized to your farm ground and your way of farming. Lock in preseason cash discounts, rewards, and competitive pricing by contacting your local Mustang DSM or dealer. Mustang Seeds, plant with pride. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. The Trojans find the end zone. Hedick to Hybertson for his second touchdown catch of the day and the third toss uh, for a touchdown pass today by Trey Hedick. And a kickoff here. Trojans lead 19-14. Caught at the 10-yard line. Javion Davison nowhere to go. Having a trail backwards at the 15 now. Running into a lot of Trojans. Won't get to the 20. Javion Davison inside the 20-yard line. Going to battle for the 
second worst field position of the night. It's going to be at the 17. It will be indeed the second worst field position of the night for the Comets. This is now the second most points in a game the Trojans have scored this season. The most coming all the way back in week number four against Waldorf when they were able to squeeze out 20. Now they got 19, a chance to have the most points scored all season right now. 944 left in this third. Two receive or one receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon handoff looks like Olman corralled. There's a big fella in there. Couldn't see which one got the grab. It was 40 something. It's probably going to be Terrence Sir on that one. It'll be just a one yard gain for the comments on that one. Yep, Terrence Sir in on the tackle. Last drive for the Trojans, guys. A good one. They finished that bad boy six plays, 75 yards down the field. Second down play coming here. Same set. Running back on the left hip, getting pushed out, wheeling out near side. Salmon thinking down the field. Pump fake, going to keep it going up the middle. Nowhere to go with it. Going to run that football. Runs into three Trojans. Keeps trying to push forward. Got some guts here and some moxie, does Mr. Tim Salmon. Even a guy that's not a runner, probably the most non-runner quarterback in this conference, still not a slider either. What's up with these quarterbacks not sliding these days? Everybody's so tough. We got some excitement on this near sideline, jumping around. Joshua Schaefer trying to get the crowd pumped up. Third down and two. Looking for a new call from the sideline. Got twins split on each side of the field. Do the Comets. Looking to air this one out, maybe. Or it's a diversion. A little keeper from Salmon coming here. Let's keep an eye out for it. Three seconds on the play clock. One Salmon keeper. Right side. Going to toss it at the last second. Catch made far side of the field. And it was caught by, looks like a number 10. That would be Elijah Roundtree, the junior. And that's going to be enough for a fresh set of downs for the Comets. First first down they've had in a while for the Comets. Got their ninth of the day. Seven and a half left in this third. 19-14 Trojans on top. Ball between the two hashes. One receiver split on each side of the field. And the pistol, Salmon takes the snap, handoff. Ullman trying to run straight through the middle. Devontae Murphy says, where are you going, fella? Going nowhere, but a one-yard gain barely due to forward progress. But Murphy bursting through the seams at that nose guard spot. Saying, you ain't running through this interior, fella. We've seen enough of that. Mentioned in, to, uh, in today's preview about the Trojans not being able to put things together on both the run defense side and the pass defense side. Typically, throughout the season, it's been one or the other. Example, against Valley City State in the last outing, they were able to shut down the pass virtually, but the run game thrived, and that's been a mixed bag for them later in this season. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon, toss near side, Ullman. Going to get corralled by the Trojans. Will he get anywhere at all in the gain? One yard. One yard gain on the toss to Ullman near side. We got third down now. Six minutes, 20 seconds left in this third. Third down for the Trojans here. They've already gotten stops on third down, or a stop on third down in this half on the uh, comments here. Let's see if they can get another one. See what we can get on going here. Trojan defense. Press coverage far side. Cage on Davison. Two receivers far side, one near. Cage backing up a little bit, faking the press. Salmon stepping up. Lone in the backfield. Takes the snap. Looking far side, middle of the field. A little bit of pressure. Going to have to scramble far side of the field. Going to toss it. Going to be, no, oh, almost too short, but it was caught. By the receiver, Mr. Roundtree is going to be short of a first down, though. And they cannot convert on third once again. Don't believe they give him any yardage on the catch. He caught it right at the line, couldn't get past it. Fourth down coming up from the exact same spot. 
Fourth and seven. Good defense from the Trojans. Just a handful of plays or less once again. And a punt away coming for the Comets. First time having back-to-back -back punts all night long. Good punt there to Skogerbo. Going to catch it at the 26. Going to try and return it near side. Runs straight into a Comet player and gets corralled by another one. Can't get to the 30. It's stopped at the 29. That's where the Trojan offense will begin. Another punt away for the Comets. Back to the Trojans. Trojan defense clicking now to match this Trojan offense. Correction, that was actually six plays, not five. Six plays and 16 yards. And we got 4.50 left in this third quarter. Trojans on top, 19-14, trying to add to it. They've had three straight touchdown drives dating back into this first half of play here. Trips far side. Hedick taking the snap. Wheeling out. Iverson near side. Pressure in the backfield. And Hedick going to get taken down. They get past Mr. Jack O'Neill and slam Hedick to the ground on that one. Hedick's been able to step through the pocket and get past some of the defenders that have come this way. That's going to be the first sack in this game, as a matter of fact. And that's going to be a second down in 21. Talk about the uh, when uh, when Hedick tries to escape earlier. We see the the loss that typically happens. And that was probably one of the shorter ones of his back pedal. Two receivers, no trips far side. One receiver near Iverson, left hip of Hedick. Quick pass to Iverson out of the backfield. Got some room on the far side. Shifty gets past the 25, almost to the 30, almost to the original line of scrimmage. You got a pair of shifty backs over here for the Trojans here. I know uh, it seems like, well, I say it seems like, definitely having a back-and-forth rotation between uh, drives here with your running backs. This might be one of those drives where you could use Tice Ortman to make a the big play there. But I like Iverson in space. And I like his speed and shiftiness, so I don't mind it for the most part. Now we're looking at third down and 11. Alone in the backfield, Hedick got some got some time this time, rolling out near side, pump faking it, throwing it though, catch Austin Lake, and that'll be short of a first down. But he was still able to get it away, no sack taken this time. Unfortunate, it's going to bring out the punt unit because they have six yards to go. Going to be their first punt in a long time for the Trojans. And that's their first, their first three and out since the third drive of the game. Now, those are the type of stats you want to hear a little bit about for the Trojans, even when you're talking about negative things. We're like, hey, it's been a while since they've three and outed. Three plays, four yards. That's the second time that's happened today. Pun away from Silius in here. Got some le great leg on it that time, making him backpedal. On the catch and return now, that's Navy taking down Braxton Locker with a tackle at the 20-yard line and the rip open to the chest, the excitement pumped up play. That's our long and short snapper and my main man, Mr. Braxton Locker. All right, common offense now from the 20, going to see what they can cook up here. Done nothing but punt the ball back to the Trojans here in this second half. Between the two, of you. two minutes and 19 seconds left in the third quarter. Trojans still up 19-14. One receiver split on each side of the field. Salmon handoff to Neville, who's the back in the backfield now. He's stifled by the Trojan D. Sir in there on a stop. He had a little bit of help. Let's see who was helping him out. That'd be Mr. DJ Gray, the freshman defensive end for the Trojans, getting some work here today and on that tackle. I believe that's the first time we have called his name here on this here broadcast. Not to say he hasn't gotten tackles this year, but we saw that one. We see you, Mr. Gray. Let go, DJ. That's my DJ. Anybody that knows some little Wayne out there? 
All right, we got second down coming, second and 11. One minute and 40 seconds left in this third. They're telling me nobody probably knows little Wayne up here. <laughs> Dropping back, Salmon got some pressure coming his way. A little possible hold here near side, but no. Oh, Davison pass complete to him all the way across the 30-yard line. Cage can't get it this time. Tap on the head from Davison. Knows Cage has got good coverage, so he gives him his props. But a big pass nonetheless. Man, watching this replay here, you can argue a hold on this near side. We had our edge rusher coming over here. It looks to me like he was held back there, but officials did not see it, and the play has already happened. We've moved down the field. Can't get it back now. Big play on down the field. It's the most yardage they've had on the drive in a long time. Couple of plays, 52 yards down the field. Salmon got one receiver split on each side. Sends Neville in motion on the right side. Looking, looking, nowhere to go with it. Oh, tosses it. Top right corner end zone. Oh, almost intercepted. It was. No, knocked out. Nobody got it. No. And it did get knocked out. Bounced off a couple of Trojan defenders, Houseman and Cage in the area. Looks like Houseman might have had it, but it got knocked out at the last second. Tough view from a distance, that is for sure, but a great play by our secondary. Big play. Good stop there. That would have been right in that front corner of the end zone if he'd have caught that football. Second down, clock stop with 33 seconds left in the third. Trojans lead by five. Ball on the near side hash. Two receivers far side, one near. Salmon alone in the backfield. Taking the snap. Gonna keep it coming near side. He runs into JJ Beck. Where are you going, my friend? JJ's right there, as well as Emmanuel Drain. And Trojans gonna say they got the football, but no, no avail on that side of things. Trojans still feeling good about things. It's going to keep it right there at the same spot they began at. Or no, that's going to actually lose them one yard. Third and 11. As we end the third quarter of action, Trojans on top going into the fourth quarter. 19-14, five-point lead going into this final fourth quarter of action. Make sure you stick with us, guys. Last quarter right here on Jammin' Country 103. is your hometown power provider delivering affordable and reliable energy and services to the city of Madison and surrounding areas. Heartland offers a number of programs to help their customers grow and thrive and wants to be your trusted partner if you're looking to expand your business or if you're in need of low interest financing. Call Heartland Energy today to explore your options at 605-256-6536. Delivering power with a purpose, Heartland Energy is dedicated to delivering reliable energy and services to the city of Madison. MDL Madison has all your beverage needs. Pull up to the drive through window where you're always greeted with a smile. MDL has a large selection of fountain, bottle, and canned beverages, plus snacks, convenience store items, and gas pumps to top off your tank. MDL Madison is open every morning at 5. Make sure to like MDL on Facebook to see more cheap prices every day because discount is their middle name. MDL is where customers always go. You love MDL. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. We got two receivers near side, one far now. Salmon in the gun. Taking the snap. Salmon looking near side. Stepping up in the pocket, letting it fly. Top of the end zone here. In and out of the hands of the receiver in coverage, Caden Ning. It's going to fall incomplete. Second down, or no, fourth down, excuse me, coming up. That was third and 11 here. Fourth and 11. Will the Comets go for it here? They don't have too much of a choice. They still have time in this entire fourth quarter, but feel a little bit of a sense of urgency out of this team to go ahead and get some points up. It's been a while. Got trips near side. One receiver far. Alone in the backfield. Salmon on this fourth and 11. Trojan defense needs a stop. Dropping back, Salmon looking near side, letting it fly open. Oh, he had a guy wide open in the back over here at the end zone, but he went for the guy cutting inside, and it went right through his hands and falls incomplete. Turnover on downs. Oh, Comets are going to be 
very, very upset with themselves when they watch the film in this one and know they had a guy wide open in that top corner. Wow. That is a that is a tough one for the comments because that man was wide open, slightly blown on that coverage. Maybe they knew where the football was going and they weren't looking to the guy on the outside because Zyler Carlson, the man who had to touch the latest touchdown for the comments, was wide open over here. Well, that's all you can do on that drive for the comments. Trojan football now at the 29. Same exact spot they had the last drive at. Let's see if they can make this one a little bit better. Headache. Hand off. Iverson coming near side across the 30. Trying to make a guy miss. Couldn't get past him, but it gets to the 35. 24. That'd be a six-yard tote from Iverson. And we've got another comment down on the field. Maybe it's a cramp. Looks like a teammate trying to help him over here. Going to need to work some things out. Indeed, get this man some pickle juice. Going to take a quick break. 14-28 left in the game. Quick 30-second break, and we'll be back right here on Jam and Country 103. back is rewarding. It makes you feel good and strengthens our connection to others. But did you know it can also put cash in your pocket? Interlakes Area United Way's 2024 campaign drive is underway and you're invited to take the 15 by 15 challenge. Pledge at least $15 a month for the upcoming year and turn your form in by November 15th to be eligible to win a $500 Visa gift card courtesy of East River Federal Credit Union. Give online at interlakesunitedway.org or talk to your employer about payroll deduction. You can also mail your form and donation to Interlakes Area United Way, P.O. Box 132 in Madison. It feels good to give back. Sweeten the deal with the 15 by 15 challenge. Visit interlakesunitedway.org for details. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor Broadcast booth. And we've got our injury man who is just cramping up, Mr. Jonathan Updike, the junior linebacker, getting off the field under his own power. Got stretched out by the trainer. Going to probably find his way to some immediate hydration and get himself stretched out some more and ready to finish this game possibly. Trojans, twin split on each side of the field in motion left to right, Austin Lake. In the backfield, Iverson gets the handoff, gets squallowed up by the Comet defense. Man, who was that in there in a hurry? That's Bailey Mullenberg, number four, for the comments. They're going to force a third down now coming up for the Trojans here. Third and six. Just under 14 left in this game. Trojans still up 19-14. Need to keep the ball moving and down the field, though, and get another first set of downs. All updates tonight, courtesy of your Farmers Ag Center scoreboard. Trojans leading by five. Make sure you guys stick around for the Mustang Seeds postgame show at the end of this one. Coach Anderson going to come join us for a conversation about this game. Owen Heath in motion left to right, the tight end. Two receivers far side. Headed got some pressure. Going to have to roll out. Looking for a guy trying to get open. Who is? Maybe nobody trying to get it to Austin Lake. Wrong guy to probably try and get it to there. Might have been able to squeeze it to Roger Moore who cut back inside. But either way, it's going to fall incomplete for for the Trojans there. And that's back-to-back -back three and outs for Dakota State now. Same exact scenario for them as well and what they came away with on this drive. Three plays, four yards. This is the second, second time they've had back-to-back -back exact how many plays, how many yards gained, and exactly how many, or the exact result as well. Punt away coming from Silius in here. Got some good leg on that one again on back-to-back -back punts all the way to the 26 or so. And there we go. Back-to-back -back punts for the first time since probably early in the second quarter, I would say this is via our drives here. Our fourth and fifth drive was the last time it happened. That was drive nine and ten. So it's been a little bit. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield, kicking team. Oh. Penalty, Illegal down. formation on the Trojans. Didn't see the flag there. They've had a bunch of, or I say a bunch, a few small penalties here tonight. Three for five. 
Did they, did they call a number on that? Uh, no, they can't. No, they oh, so hold on. Trojan's going to go back and re kick this bad boy. So that penalty is going to change our going to change our yardage up here. It's going to make it negative one yards on this drive with the penalty added to that right there. So I take back the uh, previous statement I just made about the back to back exact same things. And there's the punt from Sillison. That might get a good bounce with it. No one. Not as wonderful of a bounce as you would have liked, all the way to just the 40. Maybe lost close to 10 yards difference on that punt compared to the one before, but still good punts from Silius in as of late. Now let's see about this Trojan defense, if they can get a stop on these Comets here. Comets have not had a productive second half at all. Punt, punt, turnover on downs is what their drive chart looking like for the second half so far. We got 13 minutes left in this game. Two receivers far side, one near. Salmon alone in the backfield again. Takes a snap. Dropping back, looking. Looking at Davison. Got pressure back there at the ankles. They couldn't get him. Dwyer tried, launching it downfield. Salmon double cover down there on... Trying to get the ball to Davison. Multiple guys in coverage. He can't get to the football. It's going to fall incomplete. It's going to be second down and 10 from the 40 for the Comets. Dwyer almost got the takedown in the backfield for the first sack of the game for the Trojans, but could not get the ankles of Salmon. Ball on the near side hash now for the Trojans. One receiver split on each side of the field. Or no, we got two receivers far, one near. Salmon alone in the backfield again. Ball's on the near side hash. 19-14 lead. Trojans on top. Salmon keeping it, going left side, running into a bunch of Trojans. Oh, my goodness, after his one-yard gain, he gets blown up as he gets just past the line. A whole host of Trojans there to take him down. In on it, of course, as always, J.J. Beck. Terrence Surrey on that action as well. Let's see what we got here. They're going to keep an empty back there for Salmon because they know they need some more yards. Third and nine. Not what you would call manageable. Two receivers far, one near again. Ball between the two hashes. Salmon looking back for a different call this time. Snap. Back to Simmons. Oh, no. Is that going to be a delay of game or got the timeout? Timeout for Mayville State just barely. They couldn't decide what they wanted to do. Trojans a little fired up coming to the sideline after forcing the timeout. Let's take the timeout with them. 11.58 left in this game. 19-14. Trojans ahead by five. We'll be back on Jam and Country 103. I'm at dinner. I'm having wine. I'm finishing dessert. I'm ordering another bottle. I'm driving home. I'm getting pulled over. I'm getting handcuffed. I'm getting a DUI. Saturation patrols are coming to Lake County. If you plan on drinking, always have a designated driver. Brought to you by the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety in this station. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor broadcast booth. 1914 Trojans on top in this one with 1158 left in the game. Courtesy of your Farmers Ag Center scoreboard guys. Third and nine. Two receivers far side, one near. Exact same set Comets just had. Alone in the backfield is Salmon. And a brief pause. Now we're back and continuing here. Plenty of time on the play clock for the Comets. Salmon takes a snap. Looking far side of the field only. Got pressure from Murphy. Got 
pressure from the other side as well. Looked like it was Dwyer. Intercepted by Robert Cage. Or no, that's Michael Foster. Michael Foster checked in and got the interception. There we go, Mr. Michael Foster. Young 5'9", 170-pound sophomore with the pick. There we go. Trojans with the second interception of the game. Salmon avoids Murphy, gets pressure from Dwyer. Lobs it up, and it's intercepted by Michael Foster. Excited on the sidelines, near side they are, of course. We got uh, a Trojan stepping into the medical tent now, though. Got a little shaken up on that play. Blake Duran has entered the medical tent. We'll keep an eye on that for you to make sure he comes on back out and is good to go. We got two receivers near side, one far for the Trojans as they come out on offense now. Leading 19-14 with 11.45 to go in this game. Ball on the far side, Hash. Hedick faking the handoff to Ortman. Dropping back, looking. Can't find Hybertson. Airs it out in the direction of Nathan Cook. Falls incomplete. It's going to go incomplete for Mr. Cook. Second and 10 now for the Trojans. Trojans are on the 22 to begin this drive. It's their worst starting field position of the second half. Just a few plays on that last drive for the Comets before they turned it back over to the Trojans. A few plays, one yard gained as a matter of fact. Two receivers near side, one far. In motion right to left was Lake. And it's a flag, probably a false start. Yep, false start on the Trojans there. Their fourth penalty in this one, four for 20 yards so far. And second down now, backed up to uh, second and 15. Trojans got to get interesting with this next call here. And now we got... Guys going to get set now. Two receivers far side. Yes, two receivers far side. One near, one in motion right to left. It's Austin Lake. Snap to Hedick. Looking far side. Quick pass to Ortman. A little bit of space. Gets corralled at the ankles by the Comet defense. Can't get back to even the original line of scrimmage on that one. Looks like they might lose a yard. Maybe not the play I would have gone with on that scenario. Maybe on the next after you got some more yards forward. But that one is going to make it... Just as hard, if not harder, now to get the uh, first down conversion. You did lose the yard. Third and 16 now after the completion to Ortman, where they lost one. And it's third down now. In motion, near side. Ortman got pressure in the backfield, does Hedick. Stepping up in it, got some room. Nathan Cook's right there. Throws it right over him, tries to get it to Lake, and he does. He's going to be old. He's right at the line for the first down. They're going to say he's got it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know how fast my heart was beating there, but it was pretty fast because I thought we were going to have an interception there. It was tight coverage getting the ball to Austin Lake. Nathan Cook was wide open. Mike could have ran for the first, but whoo. Close one, but it was caught and converted by the Trojans. For the first down, well, they said the near side officials said move the chains. And now they finally confirmed that we will move the chains on down the field. It's a big time conversion for these Trojans on this drive. They needed that one to complete that ball to uh, Mr. Austin Lake to get on forward. Three plays, 10 yards so far now. That ends the uh, back-to-back spell of three and outs. As they continue on down this drive, what are the officials discussing here that's been it's been <laughs> signaled a couple of times that it was a first down? Nearside official said first down. Our main official just said first down, and now they want to walk it out here and measure it. A very confusing scenario here. Maybe Rocky Larson was on them about going to check for the first. Maybe a half an inch short. Literally. Like a millimeter short at best. I guess this is what you do that for. You bring the unit on out there. And make sure that things are right. But you usually 
doesn't take a few times to get to this point to decide that you need to measure it after two guys saying it was first down. But it's okay. All right. Fourth and inches here. Maybe the uh, maybe the Trojans could incorporate a tush push here. That would be something nice to see. And we're in position for it. Hedick looking down at his car. Going to take the snap. Hand off. Ortman outside a little bit. That's a great play. And they get enough for the first down. That's a phenomenal decision there for the Trojans. And a little, a little scat. A little scatting on the outside for Mr. Orton. Another Trojan first down. A beautiful little triple option action there. And another fresh set of downs for Dakota State. 9.45 left in this game. Dakota State controls 19-14. But they need to keep on going down the field. Not a big enough lead to call this one game just yet. Trojans need at least a field goal to make it an eight-point game. Hedick taking the snap, looking down the field, got pressure, stepping up in the pocket, going to run this football, got room, plenty of room on that right side. We finally get a slide after out of Mr. Trey Hedick. I'm, I'm way too pumped about a slide, but I love it. Because I do not want my quarterbacks getting hit like that, especially ones that aren't super big, efficient, stocky runners. Hedick. Tall guy, 6'2", only 190 pounds, though. Slide. Good job. First down, Trojans at the 45 now. Five plays, 23 yards for the Trojans on this drive. One receiver split on each side of the field. In the backfield, it's Ortman on Hedick's right hip. Ball's on the far side hash. Snap to Hedick. Hand off Ortman coming around the left side. Gets outside the tackles. Ooh, gets squashed up a little bit. A weird... Uh, Weird tackle down on Ortman. Thankfully, he popped up pretty quick like it didn't even happen. It definitely looked weird on the watch here if you're watching over on YouTube right now. You can watch how he gets kind of rolled up here, but luckily just one of those that looks strange and not feeling that way for Ortman here. Looking at second down and six now after the run from Ortman. Eight minutes left in the game. 19-14, Trojans still on top. Courtesy of your Farmers Ag Center scoreboard. Two receivers far side, one near. Ball between the two hashes. Hedick taking the snap. Faking the handoff to Ortman. Going to pass it, trying to hit uh, Nathan Cook on the, uh, the trot back there. But cannot connect with Cook. Going to bring up third down. Comets brought the pressure on that one. Trojans seem to not be expecting that one, and Hedick, luckily, he's got a backpedal fast enough to get away from the guy that was running towards his face on that last play. Eight minutes left in this ball game. Clock stopped at 7.51, as a matter of fact. Third and six for the Trojans. Trips far side, one guy near. Ortman on the right hip now of Hedick. Taking a snap. Hedick looking. Still looking. In space. Throw it to Cook. There you go. Gets it to Cook right there at midfield. Forward progress. Going to get him to the 49. It's only going to end up being a two-yard gain on that toss. But everybody on that uh, on that play there was kind of a curl route scene for everybody, and they all turned around what seemingly looked like at the same time. If you ever watch those uh, NBA broadcasts where you see players uh, simultaneously doing something, this was one of those times for our Trojan wide receivers. It's a fourth and four. The punt unit is out for Dakota State, though. Eight plays, 21 or 29 yards downfield. Punt coming from Silius in here. Got a lot of air on it, not a lot of distance. Oh, boy. It's going to hit at the about 30 and not take a generous enough Trojan bounce to get more down the field. Too much air on that one. Eight plays, 29 yards for the Trojans and the punt away, and now the Comets will get another chance. Going to need a crucial stop here for the Trojans. That makes the third straight punt away for the Trojans after beginning the half with a touchdown drive. Under seven minutes to play in this game. 6.51 is where the clock has stopped, and the Comets have the football. They haven't done a whole lot of running the football, 
in this fourth quarter and some of the third. Trying to play catch up and throw the ball down the field. Hasn't been where they've excelled this season. Two receivers far side, one near. Salmon alone in the backfield. Taking the snap, looking far side. Only looking there, letting it fly down the field. One-on-one, -on -one intercepting Jay Skogerbo right in the man's hands. He was well in position for that football. And that is the third interception for the Trojans tonight. And that is the most they have had in a single game. And it's tied for their amount all season long. Three Trojans with interceptions, or three interceptions by the Trojans all year long, and three in this ball game. INT for the Comets. Back to back interceptions, as a matter of fact. One play, no yards, and a pick again for Mr. Tim Salmon. Now Trojan offense going to come out here, try and march on down the field, extend this lead, and come away with their first win, hopefully, here today. Oh, no. Going to lose the football back there, but we're going to fall on it. Thank goodness Mr. Trey Hedick was able to fall on that football. But Trojans lose about six yards on it, second and uh, 16 coming up now. After that, Trojans starting from their own 33, backed up all the way to the 27 now after the loss of that football. And let's see what they can do this time now. Trips near side, two guys far alone in the backfield is Hedick. Taking the snap, looking, quick pass, far side, catch made. Preston Iverson going to get enough for the first down for the Trojans. There we go. Getting things rolling. Trojans are able to put things together after things break a little bit. A little mishandled snap, picked back up, and now a big first down gain. That was a 18-yard uh, gain there. Trojans moving on down the 45-yard line now. Ball on the far side hash. Empty or no, Tripp's near side. Hand off to Iverson, who's in the backfield. Makes a guy miss. He's near side now. Across the 50, across the 45. Gets tripped up and down at the 40. He says first down. And yes, we agree with you, Mr. Preston Iverson. Another first down for your Trojans. Trojans marching down the field. A pair of uh, sizable plays there. 15-yard run there from Iverson. Could have been more. Tripped up a little bit. 450 left in the ball game. Trojans still in front, 1914. Trips near side, one guy far. Ball between the two hashes. Iverson, the running back, still in the game. In motion left to right is Austin Lake. Snap to Hedick. Dropping back, looking, looking, rolling far side. Coming near side now. Pressure lets it fly. Catch Iverson, taken out of bounds, but there's a flag in the backfield. And another comment is down, but let's see what this flag is. See what our official says. Personal foul. Personal foul. Hands to the, hands, hands to the face, hands to the face on the offense. Repeat first down. On number 56, looks like it was on Jack O'Neill. That'd be his second penalty of the game. So hands to the face is going to back things up from the spot of the foul. So it's going to take it back. Or no. And we've got that injured player getting helped off right now. Trojan defense backed up for a second and 25. So that is going to back it up from the original line of scrimmage, 15 yards. So that's a big one on the, the Trojans there, their biggest penalty of the game. 15-yarder there, and they're fifth. It'll remain first down after the penalty. In motion, out 
Iverson, quick pass to him. Catch made. Going to curl across the 50, across the 40, across the 45. To the 40 again where he was stopped last time all the way to about the 37. Another 15-plus gain from Preston Iverson. Said, hey, you took that from me. I'll take it right back. There you go, Iverson. Good piece of running here. Four minutes left in the ball game. Trojans commanding and on top. 1914 looking to seal win number one on the year and join the women who got their first win today in women's basketball. Well, join the winning club. And one receiver far side. Got tight ends on each side of the formation here. Hedick taking the snap. Hand off Iverson. Going to go bounce out far side, right side. Got some room across the 30. Going to the 25, and there's a flag on the field. In the midst of things, that could be a hold on somebody. Ooh, it's on the offense. And looks like Jack O'Neill up in arms again. Could it be him? Let's hear about it. Holding. Personal foul. Offense holding. Yep, on Jack O'Neill again. A holding penalty. That's 10 yards. He's been up in arms on his last two penalties, wondering what's been going on. Tried to plead his case earlier, but maybe that is something that didn't help him out in this game. Officials keeping eyes on maybe what he was talking about earlier and him getting caught slipping. Now the gain is going to be retracted from Iverson again a little bit. We're looking at a second down and about 12. Second and 12 from the 42. 3.15 left in the ball game. In motion right to left, Austin Lake taking the snap. Hedick looking. Oh, Austin Lake wide open. Catch made. Bopped at the 20, but the catch was made. And it's a first down. Oh, they're going to throw the flag. Maybe we're going to see targeting here. Uh-oh. I don't know if that was. Here, I'll check this replay here in just a second as they get things figured out here. Well, we've got this. Right beside us here. They're conferring on the field. Austin Lake wide open. It looks like he led with his left shoulder here, but we'll see what they come away with. They're discussing it a little bit. He's picked There's up no his flag, flag now. There hasn't been a wave off. Okay, they will pick up the flag, so no penalty there. I was I was sure that that wasn't targeting, especially after checking the replay. Definitely led with the left shoulder, just a big hit. Uh, good catch from uh, Austin Lake there. Gets the Trojans right at the edge of this Case IH red zone here for farm equipment that offers comfort, reliability, and the support you expect. Head to the Case IH red zone at Lake County International. Snap to Hedick. Hand off Ortman coming near side. Got some blocking, trying to cut inside. And he does. We could have ran another 35 seconds off the Yeah, that's what I'm going 20. Ball was on the 20. Now it's going to be at about the 17-yard line. Just a few yards on that one for Ortman. You got a timeout now for whom? Looks like we got another injured Comet on the field. Just injury riddled today for the Comets getting shaken up. He's going to be able to. He's staying on the field, though. Or no, there's somebody. There's another person down. Okay, let's take a quick break and let them get looked at real quick here. 30 seconds. We got two minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. We'll take a quick one and be right back on Jam and Country 103. When you're hungry for a quick bite to eat or your favorite ice cream treat, the place to go is the Dairy Queen in Madison. Try one of the signature snack burgers, chicken strips, or the rotisserie-style chicken bites in a salad bowl or basket with fries. And don't forget to grab your favorite blizzard. If you haven't tried the DQ app yet, you are missing out. You can save time and skip the line by ordering ahead, and your order will be ready when you get there. Plus, get exclusive deals and earn reward points, all from your smartphone with the DQ app. Good luck to the Trojans from the Dairy Queen in Madison. Timeout. Back with you here in the Madison Discount Liquor broadcast booth. Looks like the player being helped off was Ezekiel Knott, the junior linebacker for the uh, Comets here. Hedick just one yard short of 300 yards passing in the game here today. One more yard 
and I guarantee Coach Anderson will be raving about that 300-plus yards through the air here today, and rightfully so. It's been a good game here from Hedick today. He's put together a good performance. And as we said earlier, three touchdowns, uh, three touchdown passes through the air are the the most passes thrown in a game for a touchdown in the, by a Trojan quarterback this season. And no interceptions today. That's the most impressive part for Trey Haddock as he continues to put things together as a quarterback. No picks. No picks here today. We're going to hear the happiest Coach Josh Anderson we've ever heard in a postgame show here today. Everybody's happy when they win, right? And let's hope we can close out this win with 2.30 left. We've got a good chance to do it. 19-14, Dakota State on top. Two receivers far side. In the backfield, Iverson. He's going to get... He's going to get the handoff fake to him. Had it going to have to keep it and do a little bit of trotting side to side to find some space, but not much space at all there. And there seems to be a timeout somewhere. Not sure who's who called that one just yet. Timeout. Mayville State. Timeout Comets. Timeout with 219 left. That is their final timeout in this game. Dakota State still has all three timeouts in the second half. Looks like they're adding some, they might add some time on the clock. No, they are adding time on the clock. That's what I thought I heard. So added six more seconds on there, 225 left in the game now after the addition of time. And in the midst of this timeout, we're gonna keep it here. 1914 Trojans on top by five. Gotta get some more points, whether it's three or seven to close this one out and secure this victory. A field goal doesn't secure it, just makes it an eight-point game, makes it that much harder, but makes it a lot more comfortable for Trojans and Trojan fans watching this game. Comets making their way back onto the field now. At third and 11 for Dakota State. On the season, Dakota State not the greatest on third down conversions for the year. They're 33 and 106 on third down for just 31 percent. In conference, they're a little bit better. 28 for 81 for 35 percent. One receiver far side, Hedick taking the snap. One guy near looking finds his back out of the backfield. Iverson catch made, tackle made, and no gain or no catch not made actually. Iverson does not get the catch and it's going to be fourth and 11. Trojans got to bring the field goal unit out here, and they do. Got to come away with some points here, guys. That's for sure. And add three more seconds on the clock. Clock to 219 again. Now, Trojans getting set for the point after attempt. Aiden Janes. He's four for six on field goals this year, 67%. See if we can make it five for seven. Kick up and away. Got the leg for it. And no good. Looks like it went left. No good for the Trojans there. 214 left, and they missed the field goal. That is a crucial miss for Aiden Janes and the Trojans. Started off the, the conference season hot, not missing much of anything at all, but has missed his last two field goals he's attempted in conference. He's now four for seven on the year. Eight plays, 46 yards, and the missed field goal to end this drive for the Trojans. Now the Trojan defense got to stay stout for this final little over two minutes now and stop this drive for the Comets. Two receivers far side, one near, alone in the backfield is Salmon. Ball closest to the near tied hash. He takes a snap looking far side. Got some pressure, got a hand on him. He gets away though. Finds his man near sideline. Is he out of bounds? He is, they say. Incomplete. Got the ball to number two, the tight end, Azer. Kelby Azer, the freshman, couldn't be in bounds with the reception. So it's incomplete, second and 10. They have started from the 21 on this drive. Second worst, second worst field position in this, uh, no, third worst in the second half for the comments here. And on those where it was inside this 21, the 20 and the 17, they punted and had a turnover. Let's see if things can be the same again. Same set for the comments here alone in the backfield. Salmon taking the snap. Looking far side only 
Only looking far side still. Got all day back there. Got pressure now. Missed the ankle tackle. They can't get a sack on Salmon somehow today. And he's going to launch one down the field still. It's going to be intercepted on the far sideline right in the hands. Oh, no. They're going to say he was out of bounds, but I don't believe it. That was a great play. That would have been an interception by Caden Ng, but they're going to say he was out of bounds. I think that was a fantastic play that should have been a pick, but I can't see where his toes were, so I can't confirm anything. Third and ten now. Trojans had a good couple of first stops. 153 left in this ball game. Need another third down stop here. Trojan fans getting loud. You can hear the stomping. <laughs> Two receivers far side, one near. Same exact set for Salmon. Taking the snap. Looking middle of the field now. Got some pressure again. Going to step out of it. Going to let it fly down the field once again. Caden Ng. Oh, almost getting the hand on it, but good. A good play to try and get the ball from the offensive player. Looked like that was uh, maybe Davison far side. It's going to fall incomplete. Fourth and ten now. Fourth and ten for the Comets. 144 left. Trojans need one stop. Trojans need one stop and help themselves secure their first victory. The sideline can feel it. They know it's coming. They got to have it. The energy is great. Ball is between the two hashes. Same set again. Two receivers far side. One near alone in the backfield is Salmon. Got some guys back deep in coverage. Salmon dropping back, letting it fly middle of the field. Catch made to Ullman, and he's going to get enough for a fresh set of downs. The one stop the Trojans needed, they couldn't get it. I think part of the problem here, guys, is the secondary was back too deep, playing too soft of coverage. What are you playing back deep for when they just need 10 yards? They don't need a home run. They need 10 yards. Mistake made by the Trojans there. Same set. No. Trips coming out now. Far side for the Comets. Pressure being sent. Salmon stepping up. Far side got room. Plenty of time to throw it. Catch made far side. And he's going to step out of bounds. Looks like he hit Ullman. Or no, that's a that's a nine, not an eight. So that's Derek Frederick, the junior tight end out of uh, Turtle Mountain High School in Belcourt, North Dakota. Four plays, 12 yards on this. Or no, excuse me. Five plays and 21 yards on this drive. Second down and one for the Comets. Dropping back. Salmon got pressured. They got a hold of him this time and finally take him down. Dwyer in there in the mix. He had some help on that one. Casey Colley getting in there as well on the dual sack. It's going to back it up for a third and six. Dropping back. Looking, Salmon, little short catch made another first down. They're going to say he caught it, but Ink says no. Doesn't matter what Ink says. Official says it's a catch and a first down. A couple crucial firsts for the Comets. They're marching down. 40 seconds left in the game, though. They have no timeouts. Trojan defense stays sound here. One receiver far side, one lining up near now after going in motion. No, two receivers far now. And we got a flag on the play here. Is that a delay of game? Is it a false start? It's a false start. Fourth penalty of the game for Mayville State. The smallest penalty that they have had all night with five yards. That's going to back things up. First and 15 from their 43. Two receivers far side, one near. Clock stopped at 25 seconds. Coach Anderson trying to discuss with the official. Not sure what. Ball's on this near side hash. They're curious about a 10-second uh, runoff here. This penalty incurs a 10-second runoff. Will the game clock operator please send the game clock to 15 seconds? And there it is. They do get the 10-second runoff. That'll bring it down to 15 seconds now. And possible last play for the Comets here. Two receivers far side, one near. Ball on the near side, hash. Salmon taking the snap. He's going to spike that football. Yo, hold up, hold up. That is, that is intentional ground. You literally cannot spike the ball from shotgun. You cannot, you cannot. Shouldn't that be an intentional grounding penalty we're hearing here in the uh, press box? 
that you can't do that from the shotgun position, but they're letting it happen <laughs> and just letting this continue on. 13 seconds left in the game. I've never seen a, uh, a spike from shotgun as well, so definitely a different thing. Same set again for the comments. Salmon dropping back, looking far side only. Rolls out of the pressure, lets it fly down the field. Too much air on it to get intercepted. Falls incomplete. Five seconds left on this play clock. Or this game clock, I should say. Five seconds left in this game. Nine plays, 22 yards for the comments on this drive. Third and 15. The last play of the game. Trojan sidelines feeling it. Players are excited, getting things pumped up for this final play of the game. Stop any type of freak play. Let nothing big happen. A first down, they wouldn't have time to run another play. Let that happen. No big plays down the field. Trips near side. Salmon dropping back. No pressure all day to throw. Going to step up. Going to let one fly. Avoid a big pop. Hail Mary. And it's going to hit the ground incomplete, and that's it. That's the final here at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. The Dakota State Trojans garnish their first win of the season, win 1914 here in Madison at the Dan Beacom Track Complex. The win is secured. Trojans make sure to get a win in their last season of North Star Athletic Association play and break the losing streak. Trojans on top winners for the first time in 2023, 1914 over Mayville State, and they get that revenge they've been waiting on. At your ball game, ladies and gentlemen, a big time win today for the Trojans. Trey Heddick gets his first win at quarterback. Coach Anderson gets win number 58 for his career here, and that's going to end this game. Coming up next, guys, we've got the Mustang Seeds postgame show and guaranteed to have an excited Coach Anderson in this one. We're going to have a good talk, the most high-spirited chat in this postgame show. You don't want to miss this one after the first win of the season, guys. 1914, Dakota State on top in this one. Mustang Seeds postgame show around the corner on Jam and Country 103. There's nothing like watching the sun rise over your fields, the smell of hope in the air. At Mustang Seeds, we're ready to help you plan for the next planting season and committed to boosting your yields and increasing your profitability with quality seed genetics customized to your farm ground and your way of farming. Lock in preseason cash discounts, rewards, and competitive pricing by contacting your local Mustang DSM or dealer. Mustang Seeds, plant with pride. Trust your farming operation with the locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. With their state-of-the-art facility, Farmer's Ag Center offers trusted advice when it comes to fertilizer, seed, and crop protection products. Area producers can expect accurate and timely advice, including efficient delivery and application of products during all seasons. Locally owned and operated Farmer's Ag Center of Madison. The leaders in the field, the leaders in customer service. Proud to serve area farmers and proud to support area communities. Don't miss your favorite new Madison tradition. It's the second annual Parade of Lights hosted by KJAM Radio. The Parade of Lights will travel down Egan Avenue on Saturday, December the 2nd, starting at 5.30 p.m. If your business group or organization would like to have an entry in the Parade of Lights, you can download a registration form at AmazingMadison.com. The second annual Parade of Lights brought to you by Heartland Energy, First Bank and Trust, East River Electric, The Dairy Queen, Montgomery's, and Sioux Valley Energy. Get the power you need for your farm equipment. The power of peace of mind that dependable Senex lubricants deliver. With decades of proven off-road performance, backed by the industry-leading Senex Total Protection Plan warranty, Senex heavy-duty diesel engine oils, hydraulic fluids, gear lubricants, and greases are formulated to provide superior protection for load-bearing equipment. The power you need to keep your business running like a well-oiled machine. You can find Senex lubricants at f and Co-op Oil, West Highway 34, Madison. 
Wilbur Ellis is a leading provider of innovative solutions and in seed technology, as well as plant protection and nutrition. Wilbur Ellis, located in Chester, South Dakota, providing as grow and decal brands, various field applications, and local plot data, can provide you with expert advice for your acres. Grow smart and reduce loss. Let Wilbur Ellis address your challenges. Contact your Wilbur Ellis representative at 489 2171. At Wilbur Ellis, they never stop looking ahead. When looking for flowers for someone, or maybe it's a gift to yourself for your home or office, stop by the Floral Shop in Madison. They can help you choose the right flower arrangement. Tell someone they're amazing, pick out something sweet and simple, or just show your love to that special someone with fresh, beautiful flowers from the Floral Shop in Madison. Visit the Floral Shop in Madison online at Floral Shop.